Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday. We hope, however, it's going. We can make it a little bit better here. The Upsurge Junior League kicking off week two. Crystal Cave Gaming Citrine against World Class Avalanche. Myself, 4Y4, on Play by Play today, along with my color caster for these two or three games returned. Return. Before we dive into this one, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. And, you know, always happy to be home on Upsurge. It's been a while, but UJL now in full swing, and it's great to be back in the swing of things. And speaking of the swing, week two of the UJL. We're starting to see some pretty good matchups. Yeah, and then this one, you know, we only have so much to go off of, really, after just one week. But you put it best when we hopped on the call here. You said, look, these are two teams heading in different directions. And again, it is yep. a small sample size, but it, the outlook looks very good for one team and pretty dire for the other. Why don't you fill in the blanks of who one is and who the other is? Yeah, well, let's start with the base. We got the names. We got, uh, of course, Crystal Cave Gaming. Uh, I believe they will be on the blue side for game number one. They are coming into this round of the uh, of the tournament 1-0. They, of course, did get that first week win over Catalyst Blast, and they got some in dominant fashion. Game one, the score line was like 16-3. to It was not close. They did end up dropping game number two, but they looked very clean the entire series. It's a hotly contested game, too. So this is a team that is going to be trying to build off of their momentum. They looked great week one, especially when you look at their 80 carry slipstream, had fantastic performances on the like of the Caitlyn and the Ash in that round of play. And on the other side, we've got World Class <laughs> Avalanche, and World Class is a name that nearly anybody in Upsurge should be aware of. They've got like five teams in the UJL alone, and they do have a track record usually of success. However, this round, not quite so much. World Class Avalanche... They lived up to their namesake, and they absolutely collapsed in round one. In fact, we were talking about 16-3 being the scoreline in round one for, for CCG. Well, Cass Avalanche, they went 1-17 in their first game. So bad that they've actually promoted a substitute 80 carry, Navy Caboose, into the starting jungle role. So, you know, Team 1, World, Cl uh, World Class is definitely a team that's looking to rebuild and make something out of the rest of the season. That being said, it is a single round robin. There are eight teams, and now will be a fantastic time to turn the page. But you got to acknowledge that that page is there, and a good amount of turning needs to happen if you want to turn it out and, and start getting on top of the season. Yeah, this feels like, you know, hopefully that this page is turned and it leads to a new chapter to extend the metaphor. And hopefully you aren't just in the middle of a very rough chapter. You turn the page and you go, oh, crap, this thing is not over yet. Uh, so but, very but, big book, know, big pages, big book, big. Uh, she she fair, uh, big old spine. But we are getting into the pro draft here uh, just in a bit. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you mentioned that the, the substitute 80 carry going into the jungle spot, blue caboose. Uh, and he, to his credit, has been, you know, spamming jungle. Navy caboose, rather. Yeah. Navy. Too many. There's too many cabooses in the on the cabooses. train. Got the navy one th this time around. It like it's it a, it's a shade of blue, so I, I get I get the mix up. But uh, <laughs> he's definitely gonna have to start carrying from the caboose if if this team is gonna be making that turnaround because his opponent jungle monster. I wouldn't say he was the MVP of that first series for Crystal Cave, but he was close. Like slipstream was fantastic. Jungle monster, especially in that game two loss, looked phenomenal. On the graves now of course give it yeah i'll give you he was on graves you have a gun graves go burr and you usually win the game however it still takes quite a bit to to successfully take over the jungle like jungle monster has so navy caboose is definitely in for a trial by fire here tonight yeah, and, and he's shown that, you know, despite, uh, you know, we are kind of kind of talking about, well, you know, this is uh, mm -hmm. if, if a certain champion is played a bunch in, in pro and in play-ins and whatnot, uh, right. then it's probably going to see some play at this level, right? It's all plat. Well, uh, not but not quite the case with our first few. I mean, Kiana and Hyverding are not quite sure if they are the go-to pro picks, but uh, of course, Kiana, not. it's the one trick for baby Lilia. Knock it out of the way. And speaking of one tricks, we got Kiana, we got Belkos. I wouldn't be shocked if Volibear was going to be that third band on the red side, but... Very player-centric bands coming out so far from World Class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in their best of three, the previous one against uh, Catalyst Blaze. Yes, uh, yeah, it was those three were included in every every single pick and ban. Uh, along with the Galio was sprinkled in there after in game one. He played really, really well on yeah. You mentioned it, he plays a lot of utility uh, mid laners. And then the loss uh, was on the Lissandra, but again, back to the Galio. So if that slips through, uh, you could bet some pretty good money that that's going to be there. Another pick that is kind of mm -hmm. perma banned, like you said, player-centric anyway, is the Mordekaiser. Uh, but look, I mean, uh, this is kind of still in that sweet spot 
of you can be a one trick on a on, on a you know niche if you will pick uh and have it go well for you but on the other side right uh ccg taking away the vlad and the pike and the heimerdinger you mentioned the heimerdinger but also uh red flame evolved and navy caboose right i mean there's lots to yeah. kind of unpack here because you had kind of alluded to that even though world class they, they were living up more to the avalanche part of their name than the world class part of their name but the one part that did seem to go well at least in game two was red flame on the yeah. vladimir and great scruff was, was solid on the akali as well but yeah uh, they were able to they weren't able to capitalize on red flame going ballistic on the vladimir yeah so i mean as you mentioned red flame is probably my player to watch for world class if world class is going to be able to take this series i think it's going to be through the top lane speaking of top lane the lucian pickup you have been seeing it triple flexed predominantly i'd say in the mid lane and the bot lane position so i'd say top lane is a bit of a tertiary role for the lucian but very heavily prioritized can very easily go into a lot of those uh, utility mage styled matchups like we were talking about before and look e here world's meta it, it catches us all by storm and pantheon especially towards that support role coming out to the rift today yeah, the, uh, the the Lucian Alistar was what they played against uh, as they got O2'd by Drex Blank. But uh, yeah, the Ziggs bot is another flex that they've got in their pocket that we saw again at least through one uh, of these one week. But uh, Jungle Monster on the Olaf again, we, we've seen just you know he can play the Olaf, the Sejuani, the Graves or Lilia. Uh, you know, it, like you said, mm -hmm. it does take a bit. It, it does take a lot to get kind of going on. Graves, because you have to be really intelligent with your pathing, because you've got to get farmed up like crazy. You've got to be very, very efficient, very, very intentional with all of your ganks. And Grant Graves is even someone that has incredibly strong gank potential. But as far as early objective security and early ganks, the Olaf checks all of those boxes. Uh, and with Slipstream right. on the uh, Slipstream and uh, what? Oh, that's that an L or an I? Iwaga Kure. Uh, but uh, he will be on the uh, the Ash and the Ooh. Fresh. But it's good to see that Slipstream as well. You know, he could play kind of the big three, if you will. Uh, yeah, the Caitlin, so, the Jin, and the Ash, but yeah, so, yeah let's let's address your ooh. <laughs> yeah, so we were we were talking about this matchup. It is going to be interesting to see what Navy Caboose can do up against Jungle Monster. Of course, Jungle Monster being that blue side jungler. We were saying Jungle Monster, it should be his jungle to lose. Navy Caboose, sure, he's been practicing in the flex queue in the solo queue jungle for a little bit now, but he hasn't had that same sort of experience. Nidalee is very much a do or die champion. Yeah. Not only is Nidalee the do or die, the one of the best picks currently in that world's meta is an insanely good pick into Olaf because Olaf loves to go low. He loves to get that bonus movement speed. He loves to have that extra clear speed in Nidalee. Just so good at picking him at just the wrong moment. So we're, it's going to be a test to see what the jungle sense is like coming out for Nate v. Caboose because this is a pick that not only you need to be good at the champion on, but you need to understand how jungling works. You need to understand where that opponent is going to be. But if she, if they can capitalize on this, that is just going to be a huge swing of the game and could potentially open up the door for World Chaos Avalanche to make that comeback and to flip that page. And we shall see as the bands are rounded out here. You mentioned the Volibear was going to come in. I mentioned the Mordekaiser was going to come in. So we were both right. Hats off to us. Uh, but the Syndra, in a way. We're the winners uh, of this game. Who cares about the teams? Exactly. Yeah, until someone actually wins a game, we will take that mantle and pass it on mm. to the uh, the eventual victors here. Again, CCG Citrine Ooh. looking good. They went 1-0, and 2-1 and one specifically in the best of three, but world class 0-2. Oh, it was not a good set of games for them against Drex Blank. Uh, but yeah, you are, you're dead on about the Nidalee pick. And I think this is going to tell us a lot about Navy Caboose and uh, his uh, aptitude as a jungler because, yeah, this is a boomer bust champion. And, and, and I'll be interested to see kind of how he's able to, if he is able to get into, uh, you know, kind of these these picks, right? It seems like they have kind of a, with, with the Akali, maybe they've got some pick in them, but uh, I'll be interested to see where this Lucian goes. But how the rest of this world-class draft rounds out is going to tell me a lot more about how, uh, I don't know, I guess how they want to use uh, Navy Caboose. Yeah, it certainly is, and, and as we do start to see a little bit more of this draft take shape, uh, Kali already getting locked in, that should be headed towards the mid lane. Uh, Great Scruff is pretty comfy on the champion, I mean, we're still waiting to see what Red Flare is going to be getting. Most likely as a counter pick, because I do expect the solution to be headed to the bot side alongside Pantheon, and it's going to be picked into set. Set somebody who already can have a lot of control on that top side of the map, and it does come down to, what are we comfy throwing up here? Because you have to keep in mind that there is so much pressure now on this bottom part of the map. Lucian Pantheon with a Nidalee coming around gank. That is already a huge amount of pressure on the bottom side. Do you want to play another high aggro laner in the top lane and, and be 
at the mercy potentially of just not enough resources on the map of potentially you know not getting all the Nidalee's time and being left on an island to be knocked down especially with that roaming galio as well does he go for the aggro or do we see a bit more of that reserved farming scaling style <laughs> and actually throw that all out the window <laughs> seems like we're gonna have a full rotation here the vagar that should be slotting into the mid lane up against the galio we knew the galio was coming out it is the utility champion to end all utility champions especially when you have the set and the olaf dive in the back line akali headed up to the top lane is how i'm gonna read this one don't think we're gonna see akali in the bot lane anytime soon very aggressive up here uh, for the side of world class avalanche and with that extra flexible position that is a matchup that red flame looked at and said yes i want this matchup i can take it to the set i mean as long as he can survive these early levels i do think he's going to be able to be to have a huge advantage going into this later game fights going into his later game side lane situations and potentially looking to end this game through and I'd be interested to see how, uh, you know, going back to Navy Caboose, he's been kind of the storyline here, but I think rightfully so. Uh, it's where does he focus his attention, right? Do you say, take the school of thought of, okay, Lucian Pantheon, mm -hmm. that's a lane that you want to try to get ahead and use the the aggressiveness, the oppressiveness, okay. uh, and, you know, and so take the... I, I need to cut you off here, because I am seeing, Please. thankfully, we, have our, we always have our third man on the desk of Twitch chat. They are suggesting another interpretation of this draft that I initially didn't think about. But this is the potential that we do see a Vega in the bottom lane. I didn't initially think about this, especially alongside the Pantheon, but I do understand the alert, especially if you go for something like the slow. Pantheon is never not going to be on top of somebody. So I, I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing it that way. We will have to wait for the in-game draft to purely set everything out. I think I do see about two to three different permutations of how World Class Avalanche want to play this game. But, I mean, they needed something that was game scaling. We said that they were very early. They're very aggressive. And if their bot lane doesn't go well, they kind of got nothing. Now they may have that answer, of course, with the Vega. The only question is, who's piloting it? Yeah, and I, and I think that, kind of to your point, it is going to be about, uh, I think the Vega are... Yes, we want to talk about that in kind of these lane-specific matchups, and we will have to wait a little bit to see that, right? You could have the Pantheon go up uh, mid and still keep a Kali top. You could have just a Lucian, uh, Vagar, Bond. Oh, Pantheon is support. That the only thing I am sure about in this game is that Pantheon is support in Italy is jungle. Those are the only two constants. I, I would think so too. I would think so too. But uh, hey, uh, I, stranger things have happened. Uh, but but I think to kind of to your point about I think the Vagar is a phenomenal like, R5 pick. Uh, if you will, if it was R5, it's either R4 or R5. But either way, yeah, back end R5. Uh, pick here against a team like uh, like the Olaf uh, and the set that really wants to just run at you, and that's how they're going to try to dominate these late game team fights. So I think as long as you don't just get straight up donkey uh, in the lane, you're going to be okay. And Vega obviously has a ton of ability to play safe. He has incentive to play safe, farm up, get that Q damage yeah. going crazy, just get to your GLP uh, you know as quickly as you can, uh, and then go from there. It looks like we are going to get into this uh, the incline draft mm. here pretty yeah, quick. I think and, and we'll keep you guys updated as we see the official lane assignments, of course, here for Plus um, Avalanche. But I do want to take a deep look at that team fight because World Class Avalanche, I think they actually have a very poor team fight. They have a ton of single target damage and single target lockdown. Akali, Nidalee, Panthen, they can dive with the best of them. But they don't have tools to deal with Set when he's big. Galli is when he's big. And I'm not certain that they can get onto the back line of ash when there's a proper front line in front of them so when you're looking at the world class uh avalanche team you need creative playmaking you need a lot of side lane play focused on that nidalee and especially the pantheon roams with the ultimate because if you just walk up five versus five i'm not sure you're going to be able to get to that back line because that is a ton of beef standing between you and the ash yeah and, and i mean you have kind of you have some disengage in the form of yeah you'd, you'd hate to use each crystal arrow defensively if you have to right but you, you could okay. if you wanted to uh you know throw out a taunt the box a good flay right you, you got tools to disengage so i completely agree with you that world class i think that's why to me anyway it puts a lot more onus on that early game that we we're talking about that right it is going to be you have to be just so much more aggressive because mm -hmm. then if you build up this lead early on then you can take more kind of conventional five on five team but you can just run at kids uh, well... and, and ask the questions if you want a little bit more but to your point all yeah. things being equal, world class. Uh, I think creativity is one way to put it. Reactive, right, is another way to put it. That, oh, they need to be that's proactive. How going this, to have to be. this is not a reactive competition for world class at all. They need to be proactive. They need to be making their own fights. They need to be making their own decisions. And as we see that third pick get locked in, I believe it was my first intuition that does, or like, actually no, not my first. It was like half my first, half my second. 
but Akali headed up in the versus set. That should be the closest thing to a rough matchup. I mean, it, it's still, you know, Akali's got to survive the early levels, but then he should start really taking off about that first item. Lucian into Galio is a very Lucian-sided matchup. You should keep those waves push and definitively put Galio down, especially when he tries to come up to that wave. I like that. Vagar Pantheon? That is where I have some question marks. I am not sold that Vagar is the answer for the early game damage. Pantheon is great at getting that initial lockdown, great at getting the initial burst, but you need somebody who's going to be able to finish the job. I am not sold that Vagar is the answer to that. However, it does provide you control. You pop your baby cage down. What's Thresh going to do? Look at you? That's about it. So <laughs> it should be a trade of pure kill potential, especially when it is on the other side of the map. It should be a trade for that uh, of that kill potential way, but a lot more control to that bottom side. So that is what world class Avalon should be looking to play on the bot side of the map. But we've been talking a lot about the Avalanche. We got to look at the Crystal Cave because they've got a lot of tools here as well. Olaf, as we mentioned, is susceptible to the Nidalee. Does need to be careful with the early laning to uh, early roaming to make sure he doesn't just get pounced on by the cat, by the prowess herself. But once you get into these these neutral objective fights, once you get these three on three, four on fours, five on fives, that is where I see Crystal Cave going up. They've got to be safe in the early game, but once those objectives start hitting the map, they need to be the ones who are pushing the issue. No, I mean, they have to be, and it is going to just come down to uh, Jungle Monster on that Olaf. And I think, like you said, it's, yeah, he's susceptible to the Nidalee, but I think the question really is going to be, is he susceptible to Navy Caboose, right? Does he know kind of these matchups and these, okay, right. here's where I can press my advantages. Maybe it's not around objective control specifically, but it's what do you do around objectives? What's my setup like around these objectives? Because I know Jungle Monster on this Olaf, that is a given that you are going to be, you know, uh, the betting favorite, if you will, on the first couple dragons, no matter how important you want to ascribe those to be. Uh, so it's, you know, how do you respond to those? How do you play around the power in that bot side of the map? Uh, how many drakes are you sacking, right? I think those are the questions that, uh, and, and, again, it's, these are the kind of questions that you have to constantly ask yourself as a jungler, but uh, we'll see if Navy Caboose has uh, has kind of drilled himself, to, uh, taking his flashcards, if you will, uh, on those. But I, I, I'm not too worried here about Slipstream and Iwagakure, uh, especially because, you know, like, like we said, Slipstream has, uh, you know, a little more kind of, he's given us more reason to be confident and on the ash it's such a strong pick you know off meta cheese can really either break your back if you're slipstream in wagakure or given that it is kind of an ash threat you can be very defensive uh you know and you have uh, the threat of always you know if your lane is pushed in like that you have the threat of jungle monster and baby lilia uh on the olaf and the galio to come and bail you out and come and uh, maybe punish a little bit of false confidence there uh, from Krizmeister and Shot. But before we dive into it here, uh, I do want to shout out Kono Keyboard, of course, for helping us do what we do here in Upsurge. If you are looking to take your game to the next level, it all starts with your peripherals. Uh, again, objective controls. Everything starts with uh, your peripherals, your keyboards, the keycaps, mice, and more. Our friends at Kono have got you covered. Kono works with the world's best designers, inventors, and makers to bring you some of the best gaming peripherals around. Kono have been huge supporters of us here at Upsurge and have made generous contributions to our prize pools. If you need to find a new keyboard, check out the Hex Gears X1 RGB Low Profile Bluetooth Mechanical Keyboard. You can use the code UPSURGEGG. Again, that's UPSURGEGG for 7% off your first order. For more information, head over to Kono.store. That's K-O-N-O dot store, S-T-O-R-E, to check out all they have to offer. Uh, Kono, discover amazing products. Looking for an amazing result here. Uh, our world-class avalanche, as they've got to turn their season around, they have the kind of thrown uh, the entire deck up in the air. Can they play 52 card pickup or are you just going to get a ruined deck of cards uh, out of the, at the end of this best of three? Meanwhile, on the other side, Crystal Cave looking to keep the good times rolling and take a bigger lead atop the cloud division. We're going to take it to a spectator delay, but when we come back, game one of this best of three coming at you.
Welcome on in, everybody. Game one between Crystal Cave Gaming, Citrine 1-0 and on the season, and World Class Avalanche 0-1 and on the season. Two, uh, two teams heading in different directions here, going into week two of the up junior league 4x4 and return here with you for however the series goes uh, however long this series goes whether it's two games or three uh really happy to have you here with us on the upsurge stream let's dive right into it here we this is kind of what we expected out of uh ccg and for you know a team like world class that has thrown a lot of stuff in the air and kind of hit the the soft panic button after a disappointing week one we didn't really know what to expect and uh avoided yeah. we get some spice starting with that bot lane yeah, certainly so. I'm going to be very curious to see how this bot lane operates. If there was ever a use case for cleanse on Ash, this is it. This is this is the, the picture in the textbook that defines when to take <laughs> cleanse on ADCs. It is when there is a Vagar Pantheon up against you. So definitely a very defensive early game coming out for this bottom side. And I, I want to take an, a moment to just acknowledge the matchup because a lot of these lanes, whether the dual lane, the bot side, or the solo lanes, are very sided towards world-class avalanche. I'd say the one place where that is a bit of an exception is the top lane. But keep in mind, this is up against Red Flame Evolved and speaking of which, get a little bit scrappy here in the early game. So I, I am slightly concerned for Crystal Cave that if Red Flame has a good, potentially jungler-assisted early game up on the top side, they're not going to have a lot of lanes that give them priority to make those moves onto neutral objectives. Because if they don't make those moves, if they don't take those fights at the neutrals, they're going to be in a lot of trouble because they are built for that five on five wombo. And if you never wombo, you never combo and you get the game. Put that on a t-shirt. No, couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, the onus is going to be on uh, these laners of world class uh, that they've got to be proactive. Uh, you know, I think, you know, like you said, in the, in the straight five on five, that is where if the fight is coming to them, it's all going to go sideways. And you already see here, wannabe Louise, he uh, you know, pre six, obviously Akali has her weaknesses and it's going to be about surviving that. And uh, and then also obviously Navy Caboose, uh, the onus that he has as a first time sub here uh, on and off roll. I think we're already seeing, you know, the, the dynamics that he's going to have to deal with, especially in this top lane. Luis is roaming already. We are actually going to uh, take a, a tech pause here. So we're going to get that out of the way here before anything really explodes in our faces. Don't y'all go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with Got our technical issues sorted out here. Uh, before anything really too crazy went on here, but just actually, as I say that, here goes Baby Lilia gets the taunt off here, but great scrub for turning the damage really well here, getting those double shots in with another dash. You see, flash out of him, flashes to follow up two summoners for one, but it's a kill for zero, first blood to world class. I'm going to be honest, I'm really confused what Baby Lilia was eyeing in the mid lane there. Lucian wins those fights. Period. And when you don't have Olaf breathing down this man's neck, you just back off and farm. But speaking of backing up, Navy Caboose, we talked about him having the potentially the priority matchup, but Jungle Monster would like to have some words to that one. Goes ahead, taking him out. 
Getting the Krugs out of way, so... You never want to see the Nidalee getting invaded early, as now there's quite a few camps for Olaf to go back to, but... Well, this is potentially the sign of more to come. Great Scruff might just be trying to save the rest of the team in the meantime. Yeah, let's see here. Jungle Monster. Baby Lilia going in. He's going to be met by the other jungler here. Navy Caboose kind of taken again. Just a little bit of a reactive approach there. Was trying to just get caught up on farm, but he was around and able to provide the necessary assistance for the disengage. The wards come down. Yeah, the scuttle was really the only thing that wasn't taken on that top side. But I, I do appreciate that jungle monster. I don't know if he, I, I, I trust that they did their scouting and he probably knows that Navy Caboose is in unfamiliar waters as far as his role. So he says, all right, fine. You want to mm -hmm. tangle? You want to play Nidalee? Watch this. And he just gets all up in his face and says, all right, how do you react to this kind of deficit? Yeah, especially keep in mind that we are in the UJL, so these are the bright, the burgeoning stars of tomorrow. And a lot of early development in jungling is about confidence. And if there's one thing that Navy Caboose lost the moment he saw an Olaf walk onto his Krugs buff, <laughs> it was confidence. He he had no idea what to do. It's like, do I fight this man? Do I walk away? What do we do? So there is essentially the edge coming in for jungle monsters, but now it should be about letting things calm down. It's not just about the first clear. It is about the entirety of the early game. So Navy Caboose definitely does have some more time to make up that lost ground. And Great Scruff did pick up that first uh, that first kill, but has not cashed it in just yet, sitting on about 1,500 gold. But once he does come back, despite the lack of summoners, uh, he knows that, okay, my mid lane can fend for itself. He's got to be careful here, though. He is uh, playing with that uh, that edge of the tower range. Both junglers looking here. Jungle Monster very low, but peeping over the Raptor camp. And now maybe Caboose might have a surprise for him. Throws a trap down, and the spear misses. And now Jungle Monster going to get the heck out of dodge throughout Nax to help disengage the scrappy continues up in the top lane under the shroud red flame throws out the shurigans eats all the true damage and mud is not going to be enough or is it for Luis? red flame evolve goes right back in who needs level six picking up a kill onto the set and we said this in the early game sure that is a set favored matchup in the early but you have to be careful it's against red flame this guy's been a monster even through the losses of the early season for world class avalanche and there he lets it all fall right by the wayside great kill coming back can he find the kill on the tp using his mobility to his advantage to break wannabe luis's ankles uh, after the tp there and he will say thank you very much i'm gonna style on you after i kill you uh and i'll use my own tp to get back and not miss any farm really well the last couple of minutes by red flame yeah very nice uh and, and we said before top lane is really the only lane advantage that i'm really looking at for crystal cave gaming in the early game and now with that kill it accelerates the ability of red flame evolve he has the Full Seeker's Arm Guard, so has armor, has some resistances up against Luis's his barrage of damage. And more importantly, because Wannabe Luis teleported back to try to get that kill, he doesn't have to force a fight on Dragon. And remember what we said, this blue side wants, just they needs to fight around neutral objectives. And without having set, miss a lot of that team fight. Yeah, you really do. Uh, Red Flame, no ults necessary. Jungle Monster flashing right over on Navy Caboose. They're both down on flashes, but shot coming in with the empowered E not going to get it. Jungle Monster able to clean up the kill. There goes the E, excuse me, and a thresh over the wall. But now here comes the first hero's entrance of the game. Blast Cone used. Try to get you Akure in range. Doesn't even need it. The Grizzmeister baby cage comes down, but it is all for not one kill over to the side of CCG. Make that two, actually, and this could create the prio they need to take that dragon. You know, we're going to have to add another definition to this, this whole dictionary we were talking about. You know, we have, you know, when do you take cleanse on jungle, on AD carry? Right here. When do you say jungle difference? You say it right here, ladies and gentlemen. Olaf is out jungling the Nidalee. Olaf is decisively out jungling the Nidalee. Jungle's been having a phenomenal early game so far. Navy Caboose really is going to have to pick it up because you have your lanes doing exactly what you needed. Red Flame, at this point in the game, has done everything and more that the team has asked from him. And now, it is potentially those other lanes that will be letting up pressure a little bit. Great scruff. Ooh, he gets ulted right under his tower, but there's action in the mid lane to be had as well. No kill coming across the radar, except for the one for Jungle Monster. We might get one in that top lane. Red Flame going in, and then take the tower shot and will go down. Can't shroud away from that. Traded up in the top lane, but the action is not done just yet. Harold spawns saying, oh sweet, a fight! And she pops out of her hobble and is able to grab a glimpse here of Navy Caboose going the wrong way. Uh, this, this is, um... This might be what counter jungling looks like in a vacuum, but, but uh, not really <laughs> I don't know what kind of vacuums you're buying. Like you're not buying Dyson, you're buying like the Lyson. That's like the one yeah, letter change. Like, uh... It's like fifty percent off on the black market. But no, that's uh, 
that's uh, that's not the great yeah, vacuum that, 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 there. That's but... not the reason you want to find yourself uh, right. in your opponent's jungle right before an objective. Exactly. And with that, th we always talk about this this concept of pressing your will, making sure that you are the one who is setting the tempo completely. Jungle monster needs to be a little bit careful though. Great scruff and company are here on this red buff. Yep, and he does not have his chilling smite, so I'm not able to use it there. And I think he's just going to surrender the double buffs. That is a big steaming Ooh. pile of shutdown gold over to yeah. uh, about the last person you would want it to go on. Red Flame is huge. Yeah, and that's pretty big when you consider it. And, and recognize what the map state just was on this in this game. You killed the jungler. You had control on mid lane. You had everything you could have possibly wanted. You were a kid in the candy store, and you Ooh. had the choice to pick whatever you wanted. Drag. Boom, it's a bear available. Harold, you get it, buddy. But what do they do? They try to invade onto red side. They get caught out with no flash. And all of a sudden, what should have been a neutral objective advantage turns into absolutely nothing. And now Navy Caboose is finding his first gank of the game. Yep, and it is a good one. Chris Meister picks up the kill there on the 2v1. Meanwhile, a little bit closer to mid lane, that dragon pit. Another kill going over, oh, over no. to Baby Lilia. And another one over to Red Flame as well. Uh, this is a fiesta here returned. And still no objectives taken. But one started here as Navy Caboose trying to capitalize on his mm -hmm. success and his... Pryo, question mark? Not really. Uh, uh, they, they've got him red. So typically, when you're going for the jungler, you, you when you're going for that dragon, you want to have at least one of these three conditions met. Four conditions. The enemy team is just somewhere else. Not quite here. You have a strong control of mid lane, or you have a strong control of bot lane, or you have a strong control of the pit itself. Mid lane is pushed in for blue. Bot lane is pushed in for blue. The team is around. There's no dragon to be had there. In fact, what I'd rather see them doing is utilizing some of these advantages that they had just gotten to get vision in because now this is a risky dragon in a place that realistically blue side wants to fight they want to use the galley ulti on something they want a time for to just let olaf loose on this back line and by just stalling this out it's it's gonna hurt them in the long run yeah, the top laners will not be present uh, unless they take the scenic routes. Both TPs down for them. But nothing, uh, nothing to yep. worry about on that front. Red, really. Red Flame is Red Flame is just looking for blood. He's looking for absolutely everything. Does not matter if he tanks like three tower shots. He wants to find the flashiest thing he could possibly do. Yep, and he's just gonna recall them. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know about that matchup right there. Goes right back in, gets ulted into the river. But Red Flame opted for defense in that Seeker's arm grunt, so he'll survive that. Completely sidesteps the Haymaker. Now he's got some help for Navy Caboose, but here comes the hero's entrance. Wanna be Luis might get bailed out here. Gets the taunt off. There go the winds of war. Red Flame is gonna get flashed on and killed, maybe, eventually. Dashes away, and he's gonna get off a great scrub. Red Flame is going to survive. This is his game. We are all just watching it return. Great oh, scrub yeah, follow it up with maybe another kill. The arrow just goes wide, and baby Lilia might survive here. Red Flame a little low to be diving there. Meanwhile, shot on the other side of the map. A pretty nice eat to negate a lot of damage here, but he will go down slipstream on the board with his first kill. Wow, yeah, that was a series of events. And personally, like, when I was calling out that Ash Show, I thought the Ash Show was going to come along and just knock Red Flame right from behind, but unfortunately, that's not quite what happened. But, yeah, Red Flame is very, very mobile. Isn't easy to lock down, and uh, Baby Lily, I'm a little bit disappointed. They went top lane to try to defend and save their top laner in a position where he is already in a bad spot. There is a concept I like to call winning by losing. <laughs> understanding where you are at a disadvantaged state and fight somewhere else. They knew that because there are multiple members on the top side for blue, for, uh, for Crystal Cave, they could go bot lane. They could go grab a dragon. They could maybe f take a fight rather afterwards, but they do the opposite. They respond top and they give. So not exactly what you want to be seeing. A very good early dragon coming out from the Crystal Cave side. And we'll see. Harold at least picked up, so that does so many equal out the odds. But this is a lead that you'd hope for world class would be a little bit bigger right now, because still that deficit in team fighting ability with the composition is still looming over the horizon. Yeah, there, there is an advantage yet to be uh, expanded on here. And Great Scruff has hit his first kind of little power spike here. He's got the Muramana. That's getting charged up. Red Flame, still a bit of a garage sale in his inventory, but that'll all come together sooner rather than later. Jungle Monster nearby. Red Flame way ahead of Wannabe Luis. Dunks him right into Jungle Monster. Says thank you for the delivery. Now Red Flame is in some trouble. Axes go down. Red Flame has to flash away. Has the second charge of his ult. He's going to use it to get away. And the flash expended. But that, that's about what you can do with a gank against Red Flame in the, in the state that he's in right now.
Yeah, but look at the bot side here. Nidalee has the Herald available. You know what's on the top side. They know they're going to be going for a dive here on the bot lane, but are they going to be able to get it? That's a huge Ooh, play. Top the... two. Flash Haymaker for Wannabe Louise able to pick up a kill, and now he's just going to join the fight down bot. Back up off cooldown. It is all world class, or rather, Wannabe Louise able to get down there and shot us a flash away. Slipstream might be able to catch him with a Vaughn. Shot is just uh, being the sacrificial lamb here. Slipstream picks up another kill, but the Herald is summoned down into the bot tier one. But no harm, no foul. They get some plates, but that's about it. Yeah, good eyes for Wannabe Luz to at least get something back off that bot lane play. But when you saw the Nilly in the bot side, when you know that Olaf's on top half the map, and I actually would have wished that they they played a little bit more towards it so they could get Great Scruff down on that play as well. And maybe that's the full tower plus the kills. But somewhat rushed execution off the side of World Class Avalanche does end up biting them in the end. They get a good chunk of gold off that bot lane tower. We'll have to go instead and check the gold on the champions. About a 400 lead. Or Chris Meister on the scaling, very much scaling Vagar, but certainly not not something to, to scoff at in any way, shape, or form. So now we're in that lull. No mm -hmm. objectives up on the map. It's going to be all about who can rotate first. And will finally, we need a little bit more play around the Akali. Yeah, let, let, let's hope so. Uh, she burned the TP as well. Uh, we was to get back into lane, although I didn't see it exactly, so correct me if I'm wrong on that. But uh, you, you heart out of that bot lane uh, and the scaling that is going to be on Chris Meister's side. And that's about the only lane where anything is even close to even. Uh, as Iwagura, Iwagakure, excuse me, and Jungle Monster, the smite goes down on Navy Caboose, locked down, Ash Arrow goes wide. Stott gets the heck out of Dodge, saying, no, thank you, I want no part of this. Jungle Monster, another kill onto Navy Caboose. No in the rush play i mentioned before that we should play towards the akali and you know maybe a little bit of a cast curse because they do play in the top side of the map but because they don't take all the boxes they don't control mid lane as well they don't try to set up that rotation to the jungle in any way shape or form they lose out on it if that two-man combination had gone mid pushed midwave in brought lucian with to the to the gang up into that top side jungle maybe they have a little bit more gusto and bravado behind them but because they don't, they put themselves in the situation where they just give gold back over. And yes, Red Flame may be popping off now. The rest of the team is in a much different position. Want to be Luis. He has got that Haymaker. Red Flame going to take uh, the physical damage side of that and a bunch of tower shots. This could be what he needs. And the ult from maybe Lilia just for security. The calling goes out and just face tanked by Jungle Monster and the poor Scuttle. Caught in the crossfire will go down. Uh, one kill on either side of the map for either team. This next dragon up in 15 seconds. And right now it is Navy Caboose and company with the Pryo. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of, of shutting down the Akali, but you have to be more cognizant of the map. You have to know that there is a dragon coming up, and this would be a perfect opportunity for that full five-man teamfight knockout. Sure, they're getting the scraps. They are getting a little bit of shutdown gold, but you got some big members still piling up on that red side. The longer they go out having to be in a proper fight, the bigger they're going to get and the harder it's going to be to pull the trigger when it matters most. Yep, shot goes over. Slipstream throwing out the arrow, trying to save her support, but Iwaga Kure will go down. Dragon secured here. Good response, like you said, by World Class Avalanche. Uh, it is still just the first, uh, you know, the, the first Drake of the game for them, the second one overall. They do get the tower there, and it is unfortunate because I think, to me, Baby Lilia, Hero's entrance up there because he saw what was going on in those 1v1s, yeah. even on the blue side under tower, that Red Flame was still winning those. So, you know, if that match was a little more even, or if Wannabe, you know, because he didn't need that Galio ult, but he was up there, so he was not down at the Dragon, and that could have right. gone differently. Yeah, it's this consonation. This is why split pushing is so strong in the game League of Legends, because it forces you to make a choice. Do you go deal with them, get the shutdown goal potentially, and keep them from just demolishing your top laner, or do you play the rest of the map? And more often than not, when you're put into that position, there is no perfectly correct answer. So it's very hard to play around. Best answer, don't let the guy get that far in the first place. But unfortunately, <laughs> we're kind of past that. So I do point out one thing, and we're going to completely change topics here. Chris Meister has Glacial. Mm -hmm. First item, when with the Luden's Echo. I am very confused. Typically, when you have the Glacial, you want to have things, uh, you want to have active items that combo mm -hmm. with it. Typically, Super Soaker, all day. Get you that pump, get you the hose, knock down early. It's actually only 10 less AP for some pretty decent stats. So a little bit shocked to see that. Also kind of shocked to see him not going towards the 
uh, the spooky ghosts either. Right. I know these are very professional names we're coming out with here, but it may become did. a little bit harder for him to lock down, Ooh. but that's not hard at all. Yeah, you can do stuff like that. Shot help and lock up the kill. He'll get credit for it. Just not able to block the Shade of Crystal Arrow. The Taunt comes in to help lock it down, and Baby Lilia picks up the kill there. Returned it one for one. Support for support. Heal and ignite for, uh, well, each other. Yeah, very happy to pick that one up, and now... Jungle Monster, is he getting engaged on her? Is he leading the engage himself? Ooh, let's see. Chris Meister enjoying the fight. Slipstream throws out a volley. And baby Lilia caught in the baby cage. Flashes out of it, though. But he will he survive the calling? He just might have. He might survive the calling, but I don't know if he's going to survive this whole thing. Canceled mid ult. Ooh, that hurts. Great scruff. Able to get his long-awaited revenge on baby, or rather to, to continue what he was doing to him in the early game. Okay, I may not know much, but I know that they were, they were not all on the same page there. Wanna be Luis, though. He's looking to end this fight. Trying to get a better ult here, and all right, maybe I can't ult Red Flame, but you know who I can ult? Great Scruff. How do you like the Blue Towers, my friend? All right, so let's take a quick wind back. Like I said, I may not know everything, but I know this. There is no way that Crystal Cave were on the same page as that uh, in that river. Because you had Jungle Monster retreating, you had ba Baby Lilia trying to fight going in, and you had Slipstream just being confused all the way. The rescue had come. The... Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fire engine had come to save the, the kitten out of the tree, and then the cat claws the fireman and runs away. That That is what just happened there. I think if there was legit play between Baby Lily and Jungle Monster, if they decided to stay and turn together, they could have met at least even, if not positive, with the double root, uh, with the double taunt. But because they were on different pages, they end up giving up quite a bit. Thankfully, Wannabe Luis did kind of bail them out all at the end with the ultimate, but... It's still the, these quick lapses in play, li quick lapses in communication that still keep them from getting just that much more. You know, with a game that's that's as close as it is right now, uh, basically even in everything, the only the, the biggest deficit is the gold, right? And that just comes down to plates, disparity, and kills, a shutdown here or there. But this is absolutely still anyone's game. And it's good to see world class. I mean, it, you know, there's a... Uh, only by watching the VODs, right, and actually watching this match can you distinguish the between like, okay, is it aggression, is it just mass chaos, or you're just reacting to and capitalizing on mistakes? We talk about the productivity, obviously, for world class, but they're hanging in there. But this is about that break point that you were mentioning, uh, Return, I think we both agreed, was like, look, the, the, the lead in this early game's got to be big enough to where once you get into fighting scenarios, you're not going to get just overrun because compositionally, uh, this is a clear advantage over to CCG. Two on one on the top lane, yeah. where have we seen this before? Uh, let's see, yeah, let's, let's see what either team will do with this. Trying to set up for that dragon. Now, Red Flame and Wannabe both have EP. And to be fair, so does Baby Lilia. This seems a little more thought out here. It certainly does. And keep in mind that all TPs exist on the map, especially when you look at this top side. Do they go for this top fight? Baby Lilia appearing up. 15 seconds left on the dragon. Can't get this cleanly. Ooh, Red Flame. Ooh, the Blade of the Ruin King active. Might be the last little bit that he needs to slow it down. Takes the ult just in case. One more will do it. Dragon spawning. Now one will commit down here. Both actually coming down for the TP. Not going to surrender this dragon in favor of a top lane tier two. I think that's the right call. Here comes the Goon Squad. It's five on four. Culling goes out for eight scruff. They've got Vision on them, they've got the Scuttle, but doesn't look like they have the team fight or the health bar advantage. Redemption coming down to top it off. Iwagakure all over that. Wannabe looking for the engage here, just zoning by himself. Everyone Watch from with the Ashalt. Off here, yeah, he still got that in the pocket. Slipstream, they've got enough distance between themselves. There goes the Ash Arrow, catches on the back line there. Navy Kaboost eats a face full of true damage, has to leap out of there. Gonna go out, throw a spear out, but that is about it. You take a pretty clean deck in all things considered. This is probably what we're gonna see a lot more of as the games go on return. Yeah, that was a really good play from Crystal Cave, and I actually do have to levy quite a bit of blame for that onto Red Flame. Red Flame had been phenomenal during the late phase, knew the matchup, knew the champion, knew how to get ahead, but cannot play with discipline in the moments he's needed. 99% of the time, is it good to get two people to deal with you top lane while your team is setting up a neutral objective? Yeah, I'd say probably like 90% of the time, that is the right call. But in that situation, when Wannabe Luis and Baby Lilia both have teleports, you need to play back. If you yep. stall them for just 10 more seconds, that dragon is yours, then you can do your stuff. But you end up dying at the worst possible time, giving second dragon over to a team that realistically needs those dragon fights as their main win condition. A team that if they were being torn apart just that little bit longer by the Akali, gives time for Great Scruff on the late game scaling Lucian, or at least the late game scaling coming out of the Muramana to come online. Chris Meister, who may come online 
Now that he has some slow items in the inventory, love to see it, but still, Red Flame started out phenomenally, and now it's honestly turning it into quite a bit of a liability. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, they say it's only a mistake if you make it twice, but this could be what starts to swing the game into the direction that we I mean, he's made it four happens. times. I wouldn't say he's made it only <laughs> once, but... <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, this specific not reading the TPs into uh, that second right. dragon play. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, and you start to think about, you know, kind of going forward. You talked about it in draft. I think, the again, the technical term that you used was there's uh, a whole lot of beef in the front line for True. CCG. And if they could capitalize and just stack up these mountain drakes and eventually the soul... The game becomes nigh unwinnable for uh, for Red Flame or for uh, World Class, rather. <laughs> yeah, certainly there. There's not that true frontline DPS threat. Great Scruff is there. He's good. Ooh, Slipstream, good night, sweet prince. The support will flay and box, but it's not enough. The calling blocks it from max range. And now here comes Pantheon, shot in with the Grand Starfall, a double kill for Great Scruff. All right, I feel like that was just made to make me eat my words, but yeah, <laughs> Great Scruff's been having, yeah, Great Scruff's been having a phenomenal game so far. I mean, there was the first kill of the game, first blood, and ever since has been really in an upward trajectory. And now that you're able to continually farm those kills, Muramana coming around. If you complete Muramana, to upgrade that into the uh, into the Mana Mune, have an S receiver, and especially now that I see the Infinity Edge, not that far from completion. I don't think he's enough to buy it on this, but he does. Okay, when that Muramana is upgraded, this man will rip through everybody. Sure, they may be pretty dummy thick on the blue side. Like that is a that is a triple C frontline coming out from Crystal mm -hmm. Cave Gaming, but that is like a quadruple D damage coming through from Great Scruff. Yeah, it, it is It is a whole skin lot. Now, Muramana, pretty close to being activated here. He's 90 away from it, 90 out of 750. He's going to grab the red buff. That'll certainly help. You know, he's, he, like he said, with the Muramana, with the Essence Reaver, just going to be pumping out, getting those double shots. And eventually, you know, he might just win the War of a Trip here just with all that damage. But you still need everybody to be on the same page. The margins for error are a lot thinner for World Class and their comp. Baron up here, don't think either side has... Uh, the the the, uh, the onus to start anything right now. Maybe you want to bait something. Arrow goes down the death sentence as well. Neither one gonna land. Great Scruff able to dash out of there. A uh, couple uh, or one really big and not gonna be available here. Trismeister throws out the spooky ghost in the baby cages. Wanna be Luis. And now shot going in. And he's going to get dunked right into the back line. Wannabe gets two with the face breaker. A shutdown kill. Huge for Navy. Kaboosh trying to get him back online. Redemption coming down, but it's a great grand entrance coming on top of Baby Lilia. Right into the baby cage, and they might lock him down. That is so much damage. That is what you were talking about. Return Baby Lilia goes goodbye. Navy Caboose pick it up two kills. Yeah, the damage has been done. Lucian is just too big. There's no one who can lock him down. And when Red Flame Evolved gets involved in these fights and there's no front left to deal with, it is open season on the carries. Slipstream may still be alive, but he did not get the most out of that team fight. Especially when he's still waiting on the Infinity Edge. There's just not the damage. And that Baron, that fight, quite frankly, controlled the game, is firmly in the hands here for World Class Avalanche. Maybe a last second play coming out from the Thresh, but... Walker, eh? not going to find anything just yet. And that that was potentially the, the final straw of this game. I don't see another fight that realistically there's going to be a chance for for Crystal Cave. They needed the team fight. They just haven't used the opportunities. The four kills went on to Red Flame. You needed them from the rest of the team. Mm hmm. Yeah, and now it, that's doubly right. Why the reason that is a really good thing that Great Scruff has gotten to where he's gotten. Wannabe Luis here now trying to contest this dragon, but it's taken. It's two to two now. Arrow goes out. Shot is locked up, and now he's again getting a dunk in the back line. Old on a really short cooldown here. Wannabe Luis isn't even level sixteen, the and they just lock him down. Great Scruff is too much. Red for a flag here. Navy Caboose does go down. It's one for one right now. Baby Cage goes out. Not going to find anyone. Red Flag might be in a little bit of trouble here. Throws down the Shroud. Able to be mobile. Shot goes in with the Grand Starfall. Pops right back out. It's a kill again for Red Flame. The damage is just too much. With all that damage and one good Vagar Cage, here is what World Class can do for you. They should be able to mop up this jungle monster. Uh, just for posterity here. Get another one for Great Scruff. Why not? Ooh, Bird of Flash as well. Yeah, they're not just chasing down Jungle Monster in the bottom lane. They're getting to push in the bottom mm -hmm. tower. They should at least be able to get an inhibitor, if not a little bit more. Maybe a second tower into the mid lane as well. But 
That is a huge victory coming out from the red side from World Class Avalanche. They started off a little bit split, and you could see the, the, the end of the tunnel for Crystal Cave. Maybe they could pull off the fight. Maybe that they could turn this game around, but the second that Akali just ravages through your bot line, there's nothing left, and like we said, Lucian is too damn fed at this point. Vega in a very similar position as he's still scaling up towards that death gap. Yeah, he, he's just gone all in. I mean, between the... He, I mean, well, I guess he... he Kind of to, to address the point that we were maybe talking about of uh, as the death cap does come in here we were worried that okay you've got glacial why not go just super sword for twin shadows right that is your one two punch uh but he said nah, i can you know with, with, with the cage with glacial on the spooky ghost i can set up all the kills i need yeah. if i'm in range for an e that is more than enough and i'm just gonna drop i still don't agree with the pickup but you're right he, yeah. he's managing yeah, no, i mean he's got, i agree yeah, but it worked whatever. out we'll survive but it, it certainly did and you know, it's it's an interesting pickup. If anything, I think it did a very good job of isolating the bot lane. Like, sure, you might not have been getting kills on bot every five seconds. However, you got a lot of control over that lane. You can prevent Slipstreet and, and Wakure from, from doing everything. And we mentioned it before, these games typically fall on Slipstream to be that main carry. This part of the game, it, that hasn't happened. Didn't get to control mm. the laning phase, period, up against a Pantheon Vagar lane and hasn't really had the freedom to do anything in these team fights because there's just been too many people jumping on him. Yeah, that, that laning phase in the bot lane was, you know, about even when the laning phase ended in earnest. Uh, but but to your point, I mean, it, it, it all went wrong on the other sides of the map, uh, right? I mean, Great Scruff and Red Flame finally seem to get on the same page uh, when they fight as a 2-0 uh, here as Wannabe Luis taken low. Spooky Ghost gonna connect. Trying to get the Haymaker to find himself more time. Flashes away and a good arrow here from Slipstream. The follow-up is there from Uwaga Kure. Lands the death sentence on a shot, but the follow-up is not there. Wannabe and Jungle Monster very low. They're just going to try to defend this tower. Meanwhile, on the bot side, Baby Lilia going to meet Red Flame. The tower goes down. The Inhib is next to the menu. Can Baby Lilia hold off long enough? He's not going to get enough help. Red Flame might pick up the two for one here. Baby Lily, I think, just going to sack it unless Jungle Monster can come up here with a 2v1. Nope. Red Flame will take what he came for and get out, rejoin his team. And this is turning into some really dangerous territory for a team fighting composition because if you go on one side, you're leaving the rest of your base open. So you have to be so careful with which fight you want to throw because it very well could be the last you ever get in this entire game. Baby Cage going down there, that might be able to pick up something. Not sure if found what it was going for, but it did find a nice little snap at the thresh. And what got and what Kure getting locked down and and really just being forced off that top tower. Yeah, I'll see if they can get it with this next wave. A lot of vision. Try not to get cheese or flanked in these narrow corridors in the jungle. Jungle Monster going to be hit by some spooky ghosts, and they do pick up that objective. Dragon and Baron going to be up within about 20 seconds of each other, and they'll set up for the uh, the former, or rather take a soft a little reset here. That is a lot of gold in a, a whole lot of pockets here. Everyone's sitting on about uh, you know 750 gold on average, I'd say, but these next few item spikes are going to be uh, really, really scary. Yeah, I'd say. Um... Hold on, has this really been happening from Navy Caboose? He's actually just gone full support in Italy. Typically, I mean, we talked about this in the early game as well. Like, you you go for Chad in Italy, you go Lich Bane, you go for kills. So far, we are seeing, what is that, the Iceborne Gauntlet, Arden Sensor, and mm. Athene's Unholy Grail. Unorthodox, I'll give him that, but, you know, it, it, I think it really does start to point out where some of these weaknesses from World Class Avalanche were. Like, this has been a very good game for them, it's not perfect. They need to be able to shore up that early game in the jungle. I'm maybe very curious to see what Crystal Cave Gaming coming out with them come at them with for game two. But it is still game one. There is still a dragon on the board, but I don't think this dragon has any reason to go over to Crystal Cave, and it does not a dragon pickup as they are now the ones on Soul Point over the side of World Class Avalanche. Yeah, they're looking to turn it immediately into a Baron here. They wave hello yeah. to Baby Lilia uh, on their Here's way, Jungle Monster. Yeah. Grab by Harold, but he's locked down by shot. Iwaga Kure gets some CC on a Chris Meister. Maybe Caboose goes in and pops right back out. Baby Cage gonna take Baby Lilia out of the fight. Yeah, but here. keep keep your eyes on this mini map. Red Flame of Vault mm -hmm. is pushing in the bottom side. This is the split they want to play around. Yep. Wannabe Luis has the teleport. So does Baby Lilia. So maybe it will be a flashback to before. And it is going to be very heavily on Crystal Cave Gaming. 
to decide whether they want to fight this or they just give it over to wall card M. here's the tp they want the fight this could actually end up being terrible yeah, let's see here. They, they, he TPs into the ward in the jungle. He might get collapsed on. There was a ward in the Baron pit that would have been just fine. They do take that Baron. Want to be Luis able to join the fight via the TP as well. And the Ashen Crack, Gentic Crystal Arrow, going to lock down Red Flame after the ult. There goes the ult from Galio, baby. Lilia in there, but he might get locked down as well. Another flying uh, legendary creature in shot going in with the Grand Starfall and able to recover despite the lack of Red Flame because of Great Scruff, because of the utility of the rest of his team setting him up. That is a whole lot of true damage but it is not enough. Baby Caboose going to pick up the kill. They're going to TP into the base and should be able to pack up game one. Yeah, very well played at the very end there. I'm still a little bit confused as to why Red Flame decided to join instead of pressing on the bot side, but you know what? All's well that ends well. It's going to be a very easy take, and I don't think there's anything Slipstream can do to defend this. Uh, I would agree with you there, other than just uh, flash into the base and prevent, uh, you know, just, just do a little... Uh, there is stat padding in that sense as yeah. well. You don't leave the fountain. Usually you uh, you, you won't uh, contribute too much to your uh, neg negative uh, KDA there. True. But uh, as far as, you know, again, kind of, kind of zooming out, we were looking for a bounce back. Uh, Navy Caboose in his first game as the team's jungler and took this, you know, is a feast or famine champion, like we were saying. Uh, Chad in Italy, I think, was another technical term mm -hmm. he used. And seeing that the game really wasn't going his way as far as that jungle matchup, just said, you know what? Great Scruff is getting fed. Red I'm just going to play support well. Italy. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. I'm, I'm, no. I'm going to settle down. Iceborne, I'm going to throw out the, you know, just pop in, get some slows, pop you know right what? back out. But it ends up now. You know what? He, he had a very good Ivern impression. It was fantastic to see. Um, but you're right. I think that, like, that was the weak point, but of a very strong side. So... Uh, Red Flame, we saw the prowess early game, a little bit less in the mid to late, although was able to take it quite back over at the end of the game. Great Scruff, fantastic lane. I'm very concerned with Baby Lilia. If they can only be playing these utility carries, that first death really showcased that Baby Lilia wasn't comfortable in that situation or, or didn't quite have it all calculated all right. In my mind, there is no way you go positive in that trade and just gives it right on over. Chris Meister in shot. Maybe not the most conventional of bottom lanes, but you know what? If it works, it works. And we'll have to see how they adapt. But one thing's for sure. If Crystal Cave want to go back to this team fight style, you need a team fight. You can't use four Galley ultimates on the top lane, get two kills out of it, and then expect the rest of the game to go your way. You need to make those ultimates count. And unfortunately, more often than not, they didn't. And that's when it just opened the doors for world, cl uh, for world class avalanche to just take this game over. Yeah, uh, after that point, they were living up to both sides of their name. The world class a little bit more, but the avalanche, just the, the, the damage and the overwhelming pressure, the able to melt the front line between Red Flame and Great Scruff as well. Really good bounce back performance from them. We are going to take it to a quick, quick break here before we get back with game two in this best of three. What uh, world class we hope to be the last game, but CCG looked really sharp in their first week matchup, took it, took that in three games. They're not going to go down without a fight. We'll see what uh, draft and all that holds, how the two teams respond when we come back.
Welcome back, everybody. Game one between World Class Avalanche and CCC, or CCG Citrine, rather, uh, was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun casting, and I know that. Uh, and I imagine World Class had a little bit more fun playing it than did CCG as they came away with the game one victory. Uh, but wow, it was it was two very different styles, and the and the, uh, the aggressors, the ones that had a lot to prove, or maybe less to lose, depending on how you look at it, they're the ones that came out on top. How much, if anything, do you envision changing in game two? Um, I'm actually not sure which which way both teams go. I think that uh, Crystal Cave have to put more into their mid to bot side. I don't think that we can, excuse me, realistically have the utility miner into Lucian again. Like they're already throwing two bands at this mid lane. You have the Kian, and then actually you have the Velkaz band down to the uh, bot lane position. If you throw another ban in there, what does that start to open up? I know the Shen got banned out before, and if you see that jungler on Shen, I'm sure he can make even more plays across the map, maybe a little bit less aggressively as the Olaf did. So I'm curious, see, I think that, that either that mid lane or that bot lane, you either have to play through one of them. Top lane, red flame strike, uh, red flame evolved is just so good. Like you had the advantageous matchup to set into Akali, and it didn't go so hot. So CCG, something needs to change. Jungle did great early, but they need to find a way to transition that through the game. And that means playing around the advantage and not just, you know, gaining the kills early. Let's throw Galio up top lane. So I think that they've got to find that, that refined win condition if they want any chance of, of at least taking it to game three here. Yep. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think uh, I think he hit the nail right on the head there. So it felt like the early game really was, uh, you know, they, they made a lot of uh, good things happen, especially in that mid or the the, the top level, rather, like you were saying. But it's then, what do you do with it? Uh, and so w with those styles, I mean, th this isn't something that in, in their previous uh, three games they really had a ton of trouble with, aside from the game two loss, uh, right? They put Jungle Monster uh, on literally whoever. Like we said, we got he's got Sidrani, Lilia, right. uh, you know, Graves, whatever. He can play all that. I want to be Luis is on the set. He's he's a meatball. He's very point and click easy. Uh, but they like to team fight. They like to do these things. And yeah. uh, you know, it, it was something that, like you said, they had the win condition. Uh, it's just what do you do mm -hmm. into it? And I think the picks and bands are going to tell us a whole lot because, like you were saying, utility mid laners. That's great and all, but it's what do you do with it and do. If, assuming Grace Cruft is allowed back on something like a right. Lucian, uh, do they take something like that into it and just hope that, oh, hopefully we don't die early? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think another layer of how you address this problem is not just, you know, what do you play and, and what do you have to ban out? Because no matter what, you, like we said, Red Flame is still a very good player in the top lane. And if CCG like that team fight style, they need to fight away from it. That's why I think difference has to be. You do not play into Red Flame. Sure, you may be able to kill him. He will still be useful in the late game. Play away from him. TP away. Sure, it's going to give him a gold lead, but you can find elsewhere on the map. Like that entire game, I was just waiting for like, okay, when is this TP Galio ulti play coming? Like set teleporting behind the bot lane, then Galio putting the nail in the coffin. It never came. It was always the top lane, and bot lane was on an island. Mid lane was on an island. And on an island, world class definitely win those lanes. So if you're going to play something that requires nation, Feel free to throw the play. You need to do it. Otherwise, you just give it on over to World Class. And World Class have already shown they are very comfortable in that position. Yep, they, they, they came out guns blazing there in Navy Caboose kind of with the, the self-awareness to, to realize that his Nidalee game really wasn't going too hot, pivoted to more of a, a support build, uh, one of those champions that can do that, although we you know you don't usually see it. It is very boom or bust, but deciding to pivot, we get that, given that other win conditions kind of organically rose up. But I do want to go back to something you were alluding to earlier about uh, Slipstream and Wagakure in that bot lane because that has been the win condition for them in the first three games, even in the loss. Right. He was great on, I believe it was the G in, in game two yes it was yeah 10 3 and 8 uh, or rather no excuse me my apologies on the ash 7 6 and 11 uh my bad there but yeah but, he, but then he played the Jin and the caitlin those are your big 380 carries now uh and i was i was surprised that we didn't see you know a lot more action or, or presence down there from right. uh jumbo monster but you know you got to give credit where credit is due because chris meister and shot they busted out the intentional lane and they, they i went, mean which was a win like I don't know if I overly credit Chris Meister. I think the, the decision-making behind them picking the champions was very sound. But I think that when any time you have a Vega and a Pantheon into a not super kill lane, you're always going to be pretty safe. But I think it was that roadblock they just never really found a way around. They kept in bot lane. Sure, they kept farming up, but Slipstream needed to get involved earlier. Jungle Monster needed to get involved earlier. And Jungle Monster 
did a very good job of shutting Navy out of this early game. But the problem is, once you've taken that advantage, you need to do something with it. If that Nidalee is already, like, in a in a bad spot, like, don't keep putting her into the ground. If she's already underground, you already got the job done. She's already buried. You got you to spread it out. And that, that just never really came. I was really hoping to see the Olaf, especially with the Galio, make a play on the bottom side. Ult from Olaf is more than enough to get through the uh, likes of the Vagar and the Panthen to the bot side, but it just, once again, it never happened, and they need to be much more proactive with finding these plays. Yeah, and I trust we'll see that, right? I mean, you don't you don't put together games like they did in that first week uh, unless you know unless they can capitalize on that. And Jungle Monster has a you know a champion. I don't I don't know if Ocean's the right word, but you know again we've seen him play kind of these uh, these different styles. But uh, yeah, I mean I, I do appreciate that that he took right the aggression to Navy Caboose, recognizing that he was out of his element. Uh, jungling is a lot about you know yes it's about pathing and timings and camps and you know and objective control and whatnot, but confidence is a big part of it. Um, so yeah, I mean I, I think that given uh I, I think that this lesson is going to be learned uh, yeah. from day one and i wouldn't be you know too upset if they drafted into kind of a similar style because we've seen them pull it off and these are very fixable mistakes also true i i think comes i think it comes in a lot to play style and i would be curious to see whether navy who stays on the aggression like the nilly or you know takes a step back Sechuani is a great pick still. Jarvin mm -hmm. thinks that it can be a bit more focused on ganking and, and just raw jungling instead of less on dominating. I think that would definitely suit Navy's play style much more, but we will have to see if he does eventually go for that adaptation. And we will see, and we will see a little bit later here as we are going to take a quick uh, tech break, get some things sorted out on our end. But when we come back, we will have game two between CCG and World Class Avalanche, the latter up one nothing in this best of three. Don't go anywhere. Back quick as a flash, we are here with the draft of game two already underway here. The Kiana uh, out again here for world class into CCG and the Pike in response. We've seen this movie before. And I imagine the first three bands won't be too different when we saw it in the last one. Yeah, I hope everyone had a delightful tech break there. Really got a lot of time to get a lot of stuff done. But uh, yeah, it seems like the mandatory bands are coming out. Like we mentioned, the Kiana Velkas again. I'm going to be really curious what this band three is going to be. Yep. Uh, before against CCG, they banned out the Shen third, really getting rid of that River Shen. Pike and Vladimir also staying the same. Only thing that would that would uh, make this a perfect is if we saw the Shen and the Heimerdinger. If you see Heimerdinger right here, we have a perfect repeat, except the sides are flipped. Yeah, so far so good. Here it is the there Lucian. Is. So the Heimerdinger still available here as that pocket pick, but uh, that is a respect ban. Learning their lesson from game one. Uh, and the Ekrim falling through the bands means that it is blind picked here B1. Yeah, Hecarim has been doing phenomenally on the patch. We're on patch 10-19. We're on the world's patch. Hecarim is a good jungler. He does a ton yes. of damage right now. He is very aggressive. He can start those team fights as you need. And if you're thinking that Olaf may not have been the perfect choice, like he wasn't getting far enough into the fights, he wasn't starting them quick enough, Hecarim may just be that answer. And I'm sure that it's going to be very, very much a let up, uh, for, of course, for... Uh, the side of world class avalanche. It's gonna be curious. Actually, I, I flipped it. I, I thought blue side, you know, blue was Aval Olaf, before, but this is actually going to be over for Navy Caboose's world class. Uh, WCA is on the blue side this game. Mm -hmm. So from Nidalee to Hackrim, still high prio, but now we've gone more towards that engaged side. 
Yeah, but as the uh, I think I think your point still does stand that yeah. it is like Olaf that doesn't fall off as hard and has you know that same amount of agency can do a ton of damage. Uh, as in response here, the Kaisa coming in and so there it is. <laughs> yeah, this feels like wait, uh, that's on know, the other side though. Hold on, that, that, that's what I was about to say. Right, it was like oh, yeah. oh finally, yeah, they put David Caboose in the Sichuani. Wait a minute, right? It seems like the junglers are both kind of right, got the wrong is here. World class at CCG on the blue and red side respectively. But the Sichuani coming out, like you said, still a really good champ. Great scaling, absolute meatball, great ganker yep. as well. And already, it seems like we're going to have a complete flip of the game plan. Before it was, well, it, it, before it was world class uh, Avalanche that had that bit more scratchy style. And there it is. When you don't have Iron Ringer Band, they're going to pick it up. It could, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, I completely forgotten which of their players play it. So it could be headed to the mid lane, could be headed to the top lane. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> it's, it really is. Um, but we'll see. I hear a shit. Did they mess up? Okay, no, we're good. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Chris, yeah. Did, <laughs> yeah, he, he did play the uh, the Ziggs bot, right? So the Mage's bot, that isn't, uh, you know, something he's uncomfortable with. Yeah, it was in that 17 to 1 shellacking in game one. But, uh, no, but Heimerdinger is, uh, yeah, that, that flexible pick there. And I imagine he'll go into the bot lane, the Nautilus locked mm. in as well. Obviously, another very strong pick. We'll see what CCG respond with in pick three. Uh, yep. But no, no huge surprises so far other than the flipping of the script, as you put it. Yeah, and then Nautilus pickup for WCA is, is primarily going to be focused on denying it away from the Kaisa lane. Kaisa Nautilus is always the go-to. Zillion could be going into the mid lane, could be going into the bot lane. Would expect to be going mid because Zillion bot would be very, very weak against something like the Nautilus. Uh, be very curious to see where all these pieces start to fit in. The Heimerdinger, if it goes to the bot lane, then you're in a situation where maybe you just play a super aggro Heimerdinger lane. Like, who needs a normal lane? Uh, for world class, they they're definitely not above getting a little bit wild in the bottom side no. of the map, but would certainly be a good way to, like we mentioned before, just block slipstream out of playing the game. Yeah, and it seemed to work well last time. Uh, so they're trying to repeat on that success again. Heimerdinger Nautilus, if that is the bot lane, not going to be as insane as the Vagar Pantheon. Uh, but the pick up here as the bands continue to roll through. Uh, Volley Bear is about what we, you know, Volley Bear and Sekum are going to be the last two bands, and that is one of be Luis's. Uh, you know, I, this is going to sound flamey, but it's not. I swear, uh, it, that's kind of his entire champion pool. That's kind of the style that he likes to play. Is he's engaging, pretty, you know. Bit style. Champion. Yep. And we're going to actually see. Okay, so there's going to be an Aatrox ban Ooh. on the red side from CCG. So denying that away uh, makes me think that we're going to be seeing the mid laner here. So either seeing the support if uh, Zillion is in fact the mid laner or the mid laner if Zillion is support. Tom catch oh, bot side, that, Zillion yeah. mid lane confirmed. So once again, we're holding for top lane, getting the counter pick this time around, though. Oh, little oh. correction in the chat. Uh, Tom is moored. So that is the top lane up what? there. Again. OK. And that was something that, OK, that is not his entire champion pool. The Mordekaiser usually gets banned away uh, into CCG, but he's going to have that as well. So waiting on the support pick, which waiting for that fifth pick, you don't see that a lot. You certainly don't. Mordekaiser versus Camille is going to be the matchup. Mordekaiser definitely early favorite in that lane. Camille just scales to infinity and beyond. That is mm -hmm. that is the definition of Camille. You are there to be a late game split push menace. Uh, and up against someone like Mordekaiser, you can definitely, if you can survive that early laning phase, I feel like we're, we're throwing it back to last game where Red Flame Evolved just has survived the early laning phase. You can definitely take over this time, though, maybe with a little bit more p firepower behind Wannabe Luis in that top side and echo gonna be that final lock in so i do think this is in fact the hybrid and nautilus bot lane just once again to keep slipstream from even playing the game that is that is the game plan going in that was on the whiteboard on the chalkboard in the anal analyst report uh just keep this man from having any fun whatsoever and you might just walk away with the w yeah, it seemed to work out last time. You, when you rack up uh, 30 some odd, you know, almost 40 kills in three games, uh, even though you lost one of them, you say, okay, you know what? We don't even need like a full on whiteboard for this. Yeah. We know that this is something that we should be uh, looking out for here. Baby Lilia on right. his other uh, controlly or, or utility carry, even with the Galio not banned out, he's opting mm -hmm. for the Lissandra. Uh, so the, you, get, you get a little bit of Frelly Road synergy there. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, this is going to be funny. The, 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 script, uh, the script reversal continues here, return. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest, like, I'm kind of shocked uh, by Crystal Cave's decision to save Delsandra for the last pick, mostly because we knew it was coming. It's either Lissandra or the Galio, and true, there are differences to each champion, Lissandra a little bit more uh, aggressive with the ability to go in, Galio a little bit more reliant on others. 
you know what you're going to play. I'm shocked they didn't leave top lane counter to that last pick. Instead, they blind the top lane. Mordekaiser into the Camille shirt. Still got the early advantage. Thought it could have just been gotten a little bit more out of the counter pick. Maybe try to put Red Flame Evolved in his place a bit more. But, you know, it is a, a pretty traditional Crystal Cave gaming composition. It's about the utility in the mid and trying to find the engagements around and hopefully allowing Kaisa, allowing Slipstream to find ways into the game that he couldn't that last time around on the Ash. Yeah, and I mean, we, we saw what Red Flame Evolved did the last game. He had a uh, an early unfavored matchup. He decided to body Wannabe Luis. So uh, let's see that script continue there. Uh, a little bit of a blip here on the uh, client draft. We're going to get into that ASAP, uh, Rocky, Ferg, uh, however you, you take your pick here. Uh, but I do think, uh, I don't know, as uh, as we see here, yes, yeah, so we're going to have the Zillion in that bot lane. Right? Uh, it's kind of rough into the Nautilus, like you were saying. But uh, you do have some uh, some fun targets for the Chrono Break. Ooh, and I'm going to get my money's worth as a play-by-play -play caster. Chrono Break or Chrono Shift, both in the same game. True. A lot of second lives being granted. <laughs> uh, it'll be very interesting to see where we go with each. You're right. Zillion definitely has a lot of targets for the ultimates. Um, I'd say mostly between the Sejuani, Lissandra, and the Mordekaiser. You typically want to uh, put it on your initial engage, the Lissandra, Sejuani. So once they've expended everything and they die in the middle of the backline because they've, you know, jumped into five champions, there is still that extra lease on life. You want to keep it away from the AD carry because if they die, eh, you're already in kind of a, a, a trouble before they even come back up. So it'll be interesting to see how they put that down. But it's still for... Uh, Crystal Cave, it's still so fight-oriented. Nobody here is phenomenal on the side lane. Mordekaiser early, sure. Late game needs to get more involved with the team, which is an interesting thing to say about a Mordekaiser, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they can break out of this laning phase, because last time, they broke, just not out of the laning phase. They kind of, you know, <laughs> found those one-offs, but never turned it into something greater. WCA, certainly much more focused on the creative play, on the sidelines, on the Echo, Camille, Hecarim, just running everybody down before the 5v5 team fight gets in. Yeah, even in those 5v5 team fights, uh, you know, the, the Mordekaiser with the with the Death Realm, obviously a game-changing ultimate, and with a comp that is going to kind of run at you, you can just uh, open the mall wide. Even if it was Tom Kench, maybe that metaphor works, as we saw the uh, the pro draft, uh, you know, uh, mix up there. Just open wide and let whoever you want come into you. Create that 4v5, uh, and assuming that the damage is enough, that might be my one worry, especially if Slipstream is shut out of this. Uh, right. The damage otherwise might not be in those team fights. Yeah, I, I, I think I would agree. I mean, Mordecai's would either need to get very far ahead. Lissandra, same thing. We need to get very far ahead to make up for that damage deficit. Otherwise, you are playing around Slipstream on the Kais. Of course, on Kaisa, you got the builds. You got the you got the crit. You can go for a little bit of AP. Very much, I expect to see a bit more of a traditional scaling Kaisa coming out of this game. But like you said, you're not playing around a Sejuani with the damage. You're not playing really around Lissandra with the damage. You are playing for the Kaisa. You've given him... Uh, that zillion as well. I'd expect to see nothing but a hyper carry here. Yep, and I think uh, just if nothing else, kind of doubling down on your point, right? Look at the rest of that damage profile. Uh, Mordekaiser is going to be just straight, uh, obviously, AP, Baby Lilia. No matter how utilitarian she gets, there's no AD in her kit. Uh, but aside from the Ginsus, I'd be shocked if there was a ton more uh, AP on right. that side, especially because they want to go so far forward. You don't need to be, you know, a ram sniping out the, the Void Seekers and, oh, look at all that fun burst. Like, that's right, not, yeah. That's not what you're doing. There's time and a place for the poke comp, but I, I don't think it's right here, especially when a Camille Hecarim Echo would definitely like to have a word with you in that case yeah yeah no, I, I would say so uh last of the picks uh coming through here in the formal sense uh but i'm interested to see in this uh talk to me more about this 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 bottom lane matchup here because you mentioned that you know the uh the, the zillion might be rough into the nautilus but i i aside from like morgana i feel like most matchups aren't great into nautilus he's so strong especially level two i agreed like nautilus is built to just be a bully he gets the extra shield, he has very aggressive engage, and he's got fantastic lockdown. I would have expected, especially if we were going for more of a uh, the hyper care composition, I think a Lulu here would have been fantastic. I think Morgana, like you mentioned, could have gone pretty well if you want to get big, beefy Alistar's always on the table. But Zillion just doesn't offer anything in the laning phase. He has a little bit of poke. Can look for some of the... Uh, lockdown with the devil bomb uh, Q W Q to get a lockdown CC with the bombs, but even that's not really consistent. 
and up against somebody like Nautilus Hibernator, where you're going to have CC just flying at your face consistently, you need to have that consistent answer. And unfortunately, Zillion, I don't think is that. If they can get away with it in the laning phase, it will be powerful in the late game. Ultimate, another life, is never really bad per se, but that laning phase, especially when we're expecting Slipstream to be a major player here, could definitely be where they start to fall by the wayside. Especially with Akram. He comes down as well. What's Zillion going to do? Like, you can slow him, but then Nautilus jumps on you. There are just so many of these questions, and I'm not quite sure they have all the answers just yet. Uh, no, I would agree with you there. And, and they've got so much backline access as the, you know, the, the ganks turn into scrimmages, turn into team fights. Uh, Red Flame is just going to get more and more menacing. Uh, he loves playing these scalers, and we've seen what he can do on them. Uh, even though his mm -hmm. team is 0-1, they are 1-0 in this one, and that is by letting Red Flame do what he does best, and that is scale his brains out. Great scrub yeah. as well, getting to the back line really easily, and Evie Caboose can set all of that up. You try to, and then you've got to, you know, you've got to leave, and then Slipstream gets caught out a little bit. It's like, it, it's it's disruption to me is how I read yeah. uh, the world-class comp. I wanna, I'm want i glad you threw it up to Red Flame real quick before we throw it over to our intermission. I think an important thing is here that you cannot play towards Red Flame if you are the red side here. You need to play towards the rest of the map. If you put Red Flame behind on the Camille, sure, his late game skill is going to come a little bit later in the game. It will still come. You need to play make away, play make towards the mid lane, play make towards the bottom, and make sure that when Camille is up and pumping, that other members of your team are up and ready for the challenge. Yeah, as a, as a, as a very strong... Uh comic book character once said he is uh, he is inevitable right and so you got to pick your poison differently uh what else is inevitable is that if you are in esports especially at the collegiate level you probably run into uh someone who we're very familiar with uh is the unified esports association previously known as uh. esports uh, they are a Kansas-based company that oversees multiple products that specialize and operate as a dynamic pipeline within the esports industry, providing shared experiences that directly serve collegiate, youth, hobbyists, uh, and amateur video game players at every stage. Starting as a small student group out of Wichita State University, since then uh, they have grown to be a veteran organizer of tournaments and events throughout the U.S. They host tournaments for the likes of League of Legends, Rocket League, as well as Overwatch. For more information, check them out at uea.gg. That is uea.gg. We're going to do a quick break. 4 y 4 and return. We're back with you for game two uh, when we come back. We live game two between Crystal Cave Gaming, Citrine, and World Class Avalanche on the red and blue sides, respectively, switching from game one, which World Class took uh, in after about the 15 minute, pretty convincing fashion. But up until then, it was hard fought. Trying to pick up their first series win here, our World Class Avalanche, after getting. Um, 
getting kind of run off the rift and not really going to mince words here in their first series last week. 2-0 in the yeah. UJL as week two here continues on 4 by 4 and returned here having return the jokes right themselves come on back on the upsurge train uh as we get rolling here a little more uh, not quite as cheesy but i'd say maybe like a your your, your dairy free cheese substitute here in the bot lane for chris meister on the heimerdinger uh but otherwise it's pretty more. close to the to the pantheon beggar i think the heimerdinger nautilus is is right there in the level of obscurity but and anyway, we will have to see how it comes out but i did like what you mentioned before world-class avalanche this is a turnaround and a half we were talking all week long about you know navy caboose coming in someone who's not even a jungle player he's an 80 carry who's mm -hmm. switch roles coming in for their starting jungler on such short notice we didn't think this was really going to work well so far it maybe isn't really exactly the carry in the jungle but the team overall has taken game number one if they can put a 2-0 series that would do so much from help for helping not only get them closer to playoffs as they still have six more weeks to qualify even if they lose this series but mm -hmm. confidence huge factor here because i don't think like i think both these teams are good i don't think they are the best in the league so if you can start to build your confidence at this level it helps as you continue those campaigns further and further into the season this is a great first step during that journey yeah, and top four in each eight-team division make it. So in the Cloud uh, Division, in any division, the Cloud Division is what we're casting right now. They're, uh, you know, being 0-1 in week one and just kind of hitting this, what we uh, sort of offhand referred to as the panic button. And so far, not too bad. Uh, you know, you just got to finish top half, figure it out after that. Then you got best of fives and whatnot. You can uh, play a little more with that. If you get a little scrap in the top lane here, Red Flame and Wannabe Luis in a similar matchup as the Akali set last game. Uh, and Red Flame came out on top in that one early. But it, it, what we harped on kind of after game one was, all right, that's great, but then in the mid game it, it, it petered out right you didn't play around the advantages that you built and that's ultimately what did them in yeah certainly so and and i will be looking to see how they transition that in the in this game as well i mean they have some power on the map especially towards that bottom in jungle positions you got to use it doesn't matter how big the guns are it's about where you fire them so mm -hmm. i'll be keeping our eyes there for sure speaking of where the guns go jungle monster it's making this first move up to the top side. Does have the melee carry, of course, in the Mordekaiser. So has somebody that can sack that pass. But look at the bot lane. Yeah, it'll certainly help with the permafrost. The hook goes out, but slipstream, not a follow-up, just wasn't quite there. So he just kind of, he didn't even panic flash nothing. The hook comes in, or rather the uh, desk grasp there. Red Flame having to burn the flash. And Jungle Monster is kind of there for the backup. But you burn a flash, that is A-OK. -okay. And now they're taking a trip into the enemy jungle, or at least they were until that Spire's Bloom got popped, instead shifting mm. their attention elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely deserved and they earned that flash. And this is something that you can now play on in the top side. Not necessarily something that you have to... Oh, but a little bit of a little bit of movement into the mid lane, but nothing quite just yet. But it's not that thing that you have to regain in the top lane. But it does now buy wannabe Luis that extra safety. You have a flash advantage over your opponent. You can either play that bit more aggressive or play with that bit of knowledge that you always have the get out of jail free card, at least in the one v one. So, be curious to see how they do transition that. A little bit of warding up river here coming from the Nautilus. I think this bottom lane played out pretty close to what we expected. Heimerdinger missing quite a bit of CS, but has firm lane control, especially with Nautilus in the back pocket. Yeah, and Red Flame TPing right back into the lane and getting all up in Wannabe Luis's back pocket, front pocket, just forcing him right out in of all the lane pockets. as well. E every pocket. Uh, Wannabe Luis might as well be wearing cargo shorts with all these pockets that Red Flame has found himself in. Uh, but he's going with the uh, the grasp here. So definitely favoring, uh, you know, the uh, he's playing the long game here, Return. but And, and maybe I top lane is by mm. far my least played position, but this isn't something that I've seen yeah. quite as much on, on, a, on a Camille. Uh, it, it's... The, uh, it's very much so it does have the defensive mindset to it like you are stacking the heel but it's much more attuned to the short trades like camille is going for she wants to get an e in prep her q before on the wave and then use the true damage on the second q to really win a trade mm. before the conqueror comes out onto the mordecai because mordecai pretty much wins any elongated trade at this point in the game so okay. by avoiding that period you still get some damage you still get some stats it's not going to win the lane but it will help you keep up just that little bit longer yeah, and that might be winning the lane as Wannabe Luis to get out of jail free card lands him right back in the penitentiary. Navy Caboose bringing the hurt up to the top lane. Red Flame with first blood. 
Yeah, and that's pretty big because the TP had already been used to get back up to the top side of the map. It is a 11 CS differential before we take into consideration this death timer and the minions that should be dying to this top tower. Fantastic play coming out from Navy Caboose. It wasn't exactly the most mechanically intensive gank in the world, but dang gosh, was it the correct play to go for. And that just set Red Flame Evolved up very nicely in the top lane. Look, we're about to see a 20 CS differential, and I don't know if that's realistically going to be made up, especially with these waves crashing. Yeah, big old wave crashing into that top lane, and Red Flame going to buy himself some time with that. Oh, just as I said, I want to be Louise caught him there as the uh, tactical sweep does come out. Indestructible, big old shield should he need it, obliterate over the top there, but able to hook shot out. So all that time he bought himself, maybe not quite as much, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you've got the CS advantage here. We'll see if he can make it up. Neither top laner again, like in game oh, one, beautiful. he's gonna be able to join the dragon down body. You've got what Iwaga Kure, excuse me, flashing away. Last tick of the night, not gonna be enough here. And now flashing forward is shot, trying to get the hook out of Jungle Monster, but he's gonna be caught out. Baby Lilia picks up the kill onto him. The follow-up wasn't there, Iwaga Kure. He's going to be able to live through this. The QWQ gets the double bomb on the Great Scarf. Enough of the disengage, but himself has to burn the Flash. Rather, that was baby Lilia on the second one right before this first dragon. Yeah, and in all that chaos, I am shocked that the first member to go down on that is shot instead of anybody on this red side. Iwaga <laughs> Kure just must have sent a prayer or something because barely by the skin of his teeth gets away with just like 10 HP off that ignite. So... Very happy to see there. And now that does set up this bottom lane that leaves a little bit more priority as they go a bit further and deeper. That is the kill going over to the mid laner. So Baby Lilia able to complete that lost trap just that touch earlier, despite still being down in that CS department. And with all these CFS differentials going on the map, you can start to see the gold lead push that much further towards the side of World Class Avalanche. They have about an 800 gold advantage right now, and they still are the side that's going to be looking to keep this game very firmly stuck in the laning phase. And CCG maybe trying to build a little advantage for themselves down in that bot lane, try to bail out Slipstream, who, uh, despite being ahead in CS ever so slightly, uh, you know, hasn't cashed in on the 2,000 gold in his pocket. So he's down a lost chapter, and that is a really nice early power spike for any mid laner, whether they're or any, any AP laner, I should say, whether it's Baby Lilia, like you mentioned, returned, or Chris Meister. It's going to feel really good. Mm. Uh, but able to relieve some of the pressure before the dragon, get a quick reset in, um, and then you, you've got to bounce here. Uh, but, well, maybe not have to bounce too quick because neither Navy Caboose nor Jungle Monster is too close. And Navy Caboose needs to be heading up towards the top lane. Yeah, uh, gonna I think he... Bail out uh, Red Flame here. I don't even think it's bailing out Red Flame. Red Flame is purely in control. In fact, I actually think yeah. that Wannabe Luis has to back off here because the ultimate from Red Flame should be enough to kill Luis. Uh, maybe potentially overestimating that damage on my end, but I don't think it's that far from the truth. And speaking of advantages, Look at the yeah. gold advantage in top lane. That is a 1,000 gold lead on the losing early game matchup once again. Red Flame is a goddamn magician at this point because he's <laughs> pulling this gold out of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's been playing this incredibly well. I mean, it, it was we saw his performance on the Akali into the set in the last game. Uh, th this is even more impressive. He's looking really, really sharp on this Camille. Uh, we mentioned that it was inevitable that he would scale. It was a an, a when, not an if. Yeah. And he, he just he's just getting giga accelerated right now. Yes. Uh, kind of, he's like, I, if you if you could buffer your scaling, that's what he's doing. He's got it buffered. He's just gonna dive him right now. Gonna pick up maybe the kill to Wannabe Luis. Woo! Get pop the Ooh. Death Realm here, and you can. It Stay under the tower. These towers follow you into the death rub. Can't land the death's grasp there, but does burn the ultimate red flame. Not done just yet. Gonna wait it out, kick him in the face, and take a kill. It's a foregone conclusion at that point. I'm at least glad to see that red side for Crystal ga uh, Crystal Cave Gaming. They did at least grab a dragon because they knew the top side. Yeah, it ain't going well. But want to be Luis. Mm -hmm. When you get this far behind, you gotta back. You're already gonna go down CS. The worst thing you could do is go down to the death and the kill and tower plates and even more gold on top of that because the waves are going to die as well you just took what should have been like you know that little uh, maybe not little but a medium-sized deficit and you just blew it up and we talked before a 1k advantage of the top lane try 2k now a 2000 gold lead on the losing matchup red flame has absolutely broken this game apart by himself in the top lane and now it's going to come down to a translation how quickly can we take this Camille lead and distribute it on the map? 
Yeah, he's got it more than doubled up. Uh, it is Red Flame 1, CCG 0 right now. That That is the score line, it seems like. He's got both his team's kills. Uh, he's got 90% of that team's uh, gold advantage. And I do appreciate that. Like you said, they seem to have taken your advice, learned a little bit from last game. That, okay, oh, no. You know what? Right, Red Flame being played around here as the ultimate with the Rockets goes out, but not going to be enough to catch Slipstream. Still holding on to his Flash and his Cleanse. Yeah. So uh, keep, I believe the Keep in mind as well that we do have that ultimate available from uh, Iwagakure, but now top lane. We got some friends coming up here, and this is the opposite of what I was saying before. They're looking for this yeah. three-man dive on top lane, but it's taken a while. Yeah, I uh, hopefully this doesn't go like uh, the INTZ one, if you guys were watching play, and it has to burn the red flame flash there. He goes in, he gets the Glacial Prison there. Want to be Luis able to pick up the kill. Onslaught of Shadows going in, and maybe Caboose is going to pop in, say thank you very much for the kill, and pop right back out. But or maybe he might at least... It's the top side advantages. that were both missed by Baby Lilia. Baby Lilia is now dead, and because that play took so long, Blue Side was able to just completely counter it out. Oh. Navy Caboose back here. Wannabe Luis is just dead. Harold is going over. And we said, if you fall into the trap of fighting top lane, you're going to give up way more than you bargained for in response. And, and that was a prime example. Yeah, that um, that was just that was just rough decision making. And just rough, you know, I mean, if it's not yeah. awareness of the teleports, right? I mean, the jungle monster was there, but he wasn't like there, yeah. there. There was no I'd, reason to be where he was. I'd much rather see taking advantage of the bot lane's position right now. And instead of trying to counter whatever top lane's doing, split the map in half, make a play and funnel something in a slipstream. But in fact, that's a TP back to top lane and jungle monster is playing around top again. Yep, uh, yep, uh, right before it, uh, they started doing this, I was about to praise them for kind of not sacking the top lane, but like you said, just not focusing all your attention there because it's yeah. it, it's a bit of a lost cause. And, uh, and and here they go again, not following our advice. Uh, it's almost as if they can't hear us up here. It's crazy, yeah. I know, right? If, if, the, if the players just, you know, listen to the casters, then we just have perfect games all the time. We can't have that. That'd be too boring. Mm -hmm. No, no, that that's how you get scripted League of Legends, and no one wants that. Ah, um, uh, yes. It's the forbidden yeah. fruit. It's too it's too beautiful to exist in this world, and then we'll have to see which of these players may be too beautiful to exist in this world as well. We saw also, I do want to say, we have been hyping up Redfin a lot, and, and in our defense, there's good reason to. The man is now 2k mm. up on his direct lane opponent. Who should be beating him? However, we saw this in game one. And we saw Red Flame enter this period in the mid lane in mid game where he didn't really do anything. And on this pick, I think it is harder to get something done in team fights, especially on the Camille as opposed to on the Kali when you've been having a rough lane. So I'll be interested to see how that's applied. Wanna be Luis. I really still don't like his chances up here. But he's able to get at least something back. Oof. Maybe Lilia not going to take his chances there with Great Scruff. Takes out a chunk of Wannabe Luis. Does Red Flame just playing with his food here. Popped into the Death Realm. Flash burned as well. The shield goes up. And that oh. is absolutely massive for Wannabe Luis. Yeah, it gets jumped on. You have to always be concerned with where you are in this laning phase. Triforce now completed is a good spike, but what have you given up just to hit that point? Speaking of which, look at the bot lane, engage. And shot gets the dredge line out, but Iwagakure flashes away. The ult comes down on Jungle Monster, double Q, not gonna land on the same person. Jungle Monster flashes, he's in the middle of nowhere, throws out the Glacial Prison, there's no follow-up, he will die. And that is a pretty wasted ult there from Iwagakure, who also burned both Summoners. And now baby Lilia gonna be caught out here. Great Scruff able to pick up the kill there, and Navy Caboose will do the same. Yeah, and this game does seem to be really slipping out of the hands of Crystal Cave at Gaming very quickly. This isn't a direct response to what happened top lane. This this dragon, oh, okay. W, not quite like you mentioned. It's not ARAM, full AP, right. nuclear <laughs> missile, uh, Kaisa here. However, this is a result of each of these lanes not really receiving that extra bit of love. Because all the eyes have been on top side and realistically that mid and bot lane matchups are built to win for the blue side of the map for world-class avalanche, they basically get to dictate, okay, when are we setting up these objectives? So whenever Crystal Cave Gaming wants to find something, they have to go through the already just mountains of wards already set up. 
Yeah, and, and, and when Red Flame has that TP up, that is another factor you've got to consider here. Uh, every carry here taking Teleport, so Great Scruff and Red Flame the only ones without it right now. Chris Meister, he's going to be near those objectives, you know, that, that, that's the that's why you see lanes being swapped into, you know, the, the mid lane with the AD carry. Again, AD carry, bit of a, uh, a misnomer here, but you get my my drift here. Um, and so they've got, like you said, with the kills, yes, but also with the, the choice of summoners. Uh, and once Red Flame can get there as well, we saw how much good it did them in game one on the Akali. And this lead is gargantuan here. Again, you credit Wannabe Luis. But it still seems like there, there isn't an objective that shouldn't realistically go over to world class Avalanche as Red Flame uh, in yeah. another scrap here with Wannabe Luis. Yeah. And Wannabe Luis is going to be entering a very awkward period where he's not really built enough to do a lot in these team fights. Like, he doesn't have that gap closer, he doesn't have that much damage. Ooh, but he still doesn't, he doesn't have that, he, yeah he doesn't have that much health either uh, <laughs> he got dove on the hextech ultimatum did go down just in case uh for posterity here and now shot has some help from chris meister arctic assault over the wall uh, jungle monster able to get out of there first tower or rather second tower goes over to world-class compliments of my flame and now you're you're really seeing it come to fruition but crystal cave gaming they are spectators in this game Ooh, Jabeta there with the E. Baby Lily able to get to her tower, and uh, there isn't a ton left there uh, as far as that mid tower is concerned. The, both the side lanes have gone down. If they can bust open that mid lane tower, that is where the snowball is really going to start to get rolling uh, for Red Flame and company as world class looking to make a statement here in this series against and a previously undefeated as far as the series go as killer instinct comes in shot gonna burn the stopwatch and that'll just help his team get away but even then a bit wasted there as slipstream finally getting on the board here with his first kill yeah at least finding something but it is the consolation prize there are no neutral objectives on the map we are 50 seconds away from the hail coming up great scrap gonna go over the wall he may want a piece of louis too yeah, a parallel convergence lands really good stuff there. Gets the stun on him. He's still got the chrono break. Yuagakure's got his chrono shift up again from that last scrap down uh, in the bottom river. Mm. So another two minutes there. I think we aren't going to see too much unless they could get a pick here. Onto now, I mean, scrap. they wanted to initially look for the uh, stack mid lane. They knew that they are not winning on the side lanes. They need to just group together and look for a team fight. The problem is there is a Heimerdinger on that team. He's just going to set up a nearly impenetrable line of defense. He's playing the he's playing balloon tower defense right now. He is it yep. down in front of his net, in front of his towers. You ain't getting them anytime soon. That is the power of Heimerdinger when he is played correctly and he is being played pretty close to correctly right now. Yeah, great scruff trying to finish the job that he started. Good reverse death grasp there from Wannabe Luis to get him off of his tail. But again, just going to have to back off here. He does have the TP as this dragon fight looms closer and closer here. Red Flame. Gonna take a swipe over there at Harold. Baby Lilia down in the side lane. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm glad you mentioned that the, the, the disparity in the side lanes, right? You're looking for a pick on a great scruff, but the side lanes are his home. He is uh, an echo and played very, very well. Uh, we saw what great scruff was able to do on the Lucian, kind of a, uh, a similar champ in terms of output, damage output and mobility. Doesn't quite match up with great scruff, obviously. They serve mm. different purposes, but uh, we know that he can hold his own and be that carry. Gonna take a blue buff here as they try to get set up for this dragon. Yep, and keep your eyes to top lane once again, even though we're looking at Dragon Flame of Alt, has the teleport, will be looking to pick up the Herald, and will be trying to be that extra point of pressure on the map as this Herald is going down. Yes, this could be a situation where uh, Crystal Cave Gaming finally gets a 5 on 5 fight, but very clearly as you're seeing the mock in right now, it's not going to be a fight on their terms. It is going to be dictated by whatever world class Avalanche want to do to set it up. 20 seconds left, and there's the Herald. There's the pressure, and here comes the decision. Do you just let that Herald take your top tower, potentially top inhibitor tower, to get the fight of your dreams, or do you split up and give up the fight? Well, Baby Lilia is answering up top, but both him and Red Flame have the teleport. So right now it's a four on four. So decision's going to have to be made on both sides here. Dragon spawning in three, two, one. Now they do get a tower out of it. And I think this is that point where you say, you know what? Look, we got kind of what we came for here. We can win this fight. We can snowball this. If I'm Red Flame, I'm pulling the trigger and going down bot. Shot pulling the trigger on the dredge line. Going to get sandwiched in there. Navy Caboose picks up a kill on the Waterby Luis. Here comes the TP. It's a double kill for Navy Caboose. They might not need Red Flame at all. Return a kill for Great Scruff as well. It's a three 
3-0. It is a slaughter blood in the water. Down bot red flame picking up a kill just come. Baby Lilia will go down. It's not an if, it's a when. The ace for world class. And that was world class set up onto the dragon. They knew exactly where they wanted to be. They knew where their pressure points were. And Gristle Cave, that's a desperation dragon fight at 20 minutes. When you are behind, you have to choose the hill you are willing to die on. For Crystal Cave, that dragon was their hill, and they died. It is now 13 to 4. They are 11k behind, and they're out of it. This game, this series, should be entirely in world class, av world class Avalanche's response. This should be their first one of the season, if only they can see it through to the end. Yeah, let's see here. This seems like a pretty, uh, pretty tough lead to throw here. They're up 12k gold. Well, don't years, say that. But, but, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to shut up right like, there that, because I'm. Gonna that's always when the interesting shit happens. Mm -hmm. So, okay, beautiful. So, wh what's got a very degrees of interesting, or maybe it's not interesting. Maybe it's boring. Maybe it's safe. But how do, uh, maybe not world class throw, but how does CCG get back in this? What what is their way back in here? CCG need to be being very aggressively about the response of division. If they can start warning up, because you're seeing a cycle that World Class tried to do. They set Red and Flame over to a side lane, they push the rest of their members up and grab vision and then fall back to their defensive lines. You need to pounce on them when they're coming up for that vision. You are not gonna win a five on five team fight right now. You have to you have to come out of the out of the woodworks. You need to surprise them, you need to ambush. And you need to have such a quick trigger figure when you're trying to find those plays. And right now, like this, when they're playing back, playing really defensive, they're never going to find that opportunity. And they're doing this while Baron is going down. And this should be giving you deja vu. It's the same setup, but is it going to be the same outcome? Let's see, it's a four on four. Well, here comes Great Scruff with the TP. The side lane pressure is immense. Out goes the old baby Lilia into the Dragon Pit. Pops a stopwatch, but David Caboose able to secure the Baron. Jungle Monster goes down. He's going to get another chance with the Chrono Shift. Double bop from Iwaga Kure. Going to buy him some time. Jungle Monster goes down. Maybe Caboose saying choo choo. I'm piled in the front of the train, boys. Let's pick up some kills. Wannabe Luis does get one, but it's two more over to Great Scruff. He can double bomb. Or rather, Red Flame is going to hook shot off the wall. Playing with his food a little bit. Going to take some tower shots before picking up the the ace only one member down the baron buff is huge for world class yeah and unfortunately crystal cave gaming they should have taken the one-on-one -on -one course on how do we take neutral objectives step number one if you are not in position to take the fight uh, if you're not in position to take the buff yourself you got to know what you're going for if you're going for a steal send somebody to their death and back off they could have looked for it and honestly i actually thought that was stolen for a second baby lilia went over at the right yeah. time i thought jungle monster could have gone over and taken it away didn't quite find it you need to know whether you're going for that steal or whether you're going for the fight because by going for the steal you sacrifice your fighting ability but by sticking around after the steel went awry, you not only lose the Baron, you lose your team too, and you lose your mid inhibitor. And right now, you need to do anything you can to stem the bleeding. Instead of putting a, a bandaid on the patch, they just cut off another arm. That's what just happened. Yeah, they said, uh, yeah, oh shoot, one arm's bleeding. Well, let's just go well, all in on using Let's patch it with the other arm. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if we can make a skin graft out of this. Gross metaphors aside, this looks like another pick here. It's Chris Meister getting on the board here. Kill number three for him. He is big. Navy Caboose, 6-0 mm -hmm. oh and 6. It is all world class right now. Return to that window of opportunity. Uh, closing here. No more air getting left in. No more drafts in this one. Yeah. They're going to be running on forward. I don't think there's anything they can do to defend this. Not even worth throwing it to play with play because it's what are they going to do? They're just going to die. And, and like you mentioned, that window opportunity, it's more like a window on the International Space Station right now. It's there. It ain't opening anytime soon. Nope. Nope, uh, yeah, try as you might, uh, that, that's not going to do anything. It's a one for uh, two here. Red Flame going in here, just taking a bite out of Jungle Monster. My goodness, that true damage prepping that third Q there. As Grayscrap going around the Nexus, why not? He gets zapped out of the, uh, out of the not gray screen. I didn't set that one up too well. Want to be Luis going to take uh, Red Flame into the death realm. A plus here. on effort, maybe a CN execution. Yeah, we, we got to start somewhere, uh, but I appreciate the, uh, the the good thoughts there. Is actually with, with a little bit of trolling deer and just kind of playing with their food, they have, they've kind of opened themselves a bit of a second chance here. The Ikathan Rain as well going to find its mark. And now another for Slipstream, they have pulled the rabbit out of the hat here. It's still dire, but this is not a situation this game should be in right now. 
I mean, I agree. I think there is some definite trolling happening in this base, and there's no reason why this game shouldn't be over. But I still think the window on the ISS, it's still pretty well shut. Astronauts, you ain't got anything to worry about just yet. Dragon, still coming up in 16. Nobody's realistically going to be knocked out of the fight from World Class Avalanche. But you need so many more of that to happen. Sure, you do get a little bit back on the Slipstream, and Slipstream's be very happy to have some gold to work with. The problem is, he's only one guy. There's still a Nautilus on the team. There's like a Camille, a 7-0-6 Hecarim. And I want to take it back a little bit to a lot of criticism levied at Navy Caboose last game. We were ripping on the guy. And quite frankly, I think he deserved a little bit of it. But right now, he's playing fantastically. Watching this hop lane, though. Red Flame's all alone. Red Flame in a little bit of trouble here. Takes another chunk out of Jungle Monster. But all the Permafrost Axe do go down. He's going to try again on the Flail. Red Flame going to take one without him. But as as all this effort is expended up top. No way. And another Zillion ult as well. Red Flame is just parkouring all over this top side of the map. Four members and an ultimate expended up top. And for what? A Dragon and just delay the inevitable here. That is the presence that Red Flame needed to be. And it, it, it wasn't the cleanest, but eventually this, this is kind of what you wanted to see you know one way or another it's gonna end and right now i think it's gonna end with one team very much in advantage great scrub finds a great kill and here just comes the piling on yep the q bombs go out great scrub gonna let the second one wear off nothing can stop this man well actually i, I gotta hold my tongue a little bit more here both <laughs> towers go down the nexus uh, has been not disrobed here. Hit I hit the tower. I, I point out my mistake and then I make it again. Grace Crump goes down, gets a little bit of shielding into the death realm, goes shot. And he's gonna take down Wannabe Luis in the death realm. How about that? The support taking down the top laner. They're just playing with their food right now as the key bombs go out. Navy Caboose finally uh, saying, all right, we've had enough. Red Flame just straight up leaves. He says, all right, my boys can handle this. And that's how it ends. World class, the last couple minutes were, they were what they were, but a, a, a dominant game two return. Yeah, I think if you ignore the last four minutes of the game, that's probably one of the cleanest games we've seen in the UJL in quite some time. And a huge turnaround for World Class. They have very came in tonight asking which page are they going to be on? Are they going to be on last week where they looked utterly lifeless? Nothing going for them to the point where they need to change their jungler. Or are they coming over with the new leaf? We are definitely on that next page. We're on that new leaf and we're, we're got a lot more life breathed into us. And I do think a lot of the credit for this game has to go down to preparing very well versus Crystal Cave Gaming. They knew who to shut down. They knew that if you don't let Slipstream interact with the game, you're going to come out ahead. And I do think it's going to be interesting to see how they evolve to future targets and future uh, competitors, rather, in the next coming weeks. But this is definitely a fantastic first step to get back on track for the rest of the season. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. Right now, you are one and one, and you're right in the th in the thick of things. Right, it's a seven week season, single round robin, and eight teams in this division, uh, and in the top half all make it. And from there, anything goes. Uh, really, really good stuff. Yeah, from uh, from the uh, yeah from the world class. Where the rest of the UJL goes, but it probably does tell you a little bit as well about the two teams that were their opponents in the first week, right? Catalyst Blaze, uh, Crystal Cave Gaming did not look like uh, the team that, you know, from the the vibes of the stats anyway, took down Catalyst Blaze. And like you said, you didn't think that, you know, and, and I would agree with you here is uh, CCG and World Class, they're not going to be kind of these, you know, these big juggernaut bullies in the cloud division, right? Uh, but also then, I think I said something about Drex Blank as well. They bodied world class and maybe it was just the difference of one player maybe it was just navy caboose role swapping coming mm. in and saying everybody just don't put me on nidalee watch what we can do uh right but i think it says a lot more about those two teams uh, as well as the the, the broader division picture team. i think it's it certainly does but i am very oh. curious to now see what is the next iteration of world class and world class avalanche look like like yes this was a very impressive win today and it does come with a lot of cloud and a lot of merit however it was, again, somebody who you were able to prepare so well for. And I do have to give so much credit to the coaching staff. They knew how to shut down Crystal Cor Cave Gaming. But now I need to see the next week. I need the, I, I need a bigger sample size before I'm ready to say these guys are title contenders just yet. But these definitely are two teams that we got to look for as we continue in that march towards the playoffs. Of course, this is only round number two of seven, but those rounds just fly by. 
Yeah, that they do. And uh, we thank you for being here for the second one of those seven. Uh, thank you a lot to Nick on the production side of things. A couple of haircuts were handled uh, so, so smoothly, like butter. Uh, and uh, thank you to Returned as well and the rest of everybody at Upsurge for uh, letting me make my debut here and letting Returned, well, Returned. Uh, they let you back in, and I'd say with not too bad of results. Thank you so much to everybody else for being here. Uh, everybody in the chat interacting and everything. Uh, Kono and the UAE, or you, the UEA, rather, Unified Esports Association, for helping us do what we do. For everyone I just mentioned, for my color caster return, this has been the UJL Week 2 World Class Avalanche over CCC, CCG Citrine, excuse me, 2 0. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I have been 4Y4, and we will see you again very, very soon.